closer to 105. The Scarlet Knights of Rutgers making their entrance for the 1983 season. Rutgers leads this series 15 to 5. The last meeting was back in 1979 at Connecticut. Rutgers has won five in a row, and they have a record of 10 and 1 at home, 5 and 4 on the road. So against the Huskies, Rutgers has fared very well at Rutgers Stadium. the officials for today's football game a split crew from the ECAC and the Collegiate Independent Football Officials Association. John Safi is your referee. Your umpire is Donald McDonald. Linesman Arthur Benoit. Line judge James Twinney. The field judge is Vincent Scarzi and the back judge James Azizio and your clock operator is Frank Poulis. This year the linesman is the correct term instead of the head linesman in collegiate football. Connecticut Huskies have won the toss. They have elected to receive, and Rutgers will be kicking off from our right to our left. There's John Angstadt, who is a junior place kicker. Rutgers losing their starter, a brilliant starter a year ago, Alex Falsinelli. In fact, deep for the Connecticut Huskies, number 20, Billy Parks, and also back deep, number six, Gary Dubois. But we've talked about the changes in the Rutgers offensive unit. Connecticut also has a new head coach and a new offensive system. They switch from the wishbone to the I formation. Coach Tom Jackson said that he wanted to take some pressure off the quarterback. 1983 football season underway for the Scarlet Knights and the Huskies. This is Billy Parks. Parks to the 15 and out of bounds at the 20-yard line. That's where the Huskies will put it in play. First and 10. Let's check the Connecticut starting lineup. The offensive line, Bill Chalawa, who is a very experienced right tackle. Gasparino on the right side. Pilata is your center. D'Agostino and Wood left side. Mike Walsh, the tight end. Starting quarterback is Larry Korn. His tailback, Billy Parks. Mike Harkins is the fullback. John Foder, the flanker, and the split end. Returning from a year ago is junior Brian McGillicuddy. This year, Connecticut working from the eye instead of the old traditional wishbone. From the 20-yard line, Larry Korn will put the Huskies into action on their first offensive play of 1983. And it's Park straight up the middle, getting nothing, maybe a yard on the play. Mercer Hedgeman made the hit for Rutgers along with Jeff Cordilla. Rutgers is in a 5-2 defensive alignment. Bob Dumont, Bill Beshner right side. The nose man is Craig Hofter and Jeff Cordilla and Barry Bukowski anchor the left side. Linebackers, Mercer Hedgeman and All-American Jim Dumont. Secondary exactly the same as last year. Erico, Houston, Young, and Howard. Second down, eight yards to go for the Huskies from the 22. John Foder goes in motion. Pitch to Billy Parks. Parks turns the corner up to the 24-yard line. Crashed out of bounds by Carl Howard. Fine play by Harold Young, the strong safety for Rutgers. Not a big guy, 5'8", 170 pounds. He came up and he took on that pulling guard, Mike Gasparino, who goes 6'2", 263 pounds. He kept uh, on his feet and forced the running back to the outside. Good play by Butch Young. Larry Korn has won the starting quarterback position over Rob Trevella, who had started for the Huskies a year ago but was hurt when he had mononucleosis in the spring and did not have a chance to practice with the club. This is third down and five from the 25. Korn rolls to his left. Has some room. He'll keep the football across the 31st down for the Huskies. Well, that's probably what Larry Korn does best. He's very fast, very quick, runs with a football, something that is certainly an advantage when your quarterback can move with a football. Uh, however, you really don't win football games like that. We talked about Jack LaPrairie running or scrambling 91 times last year for 169 yards. That's less than two yards a carry. Not quite acceptable. You want to sit back there and throw. However, you can put extreme pressure on the defense with a quarterback that can run like Korn. Korn is a junior from New Rochelle, New York. First down Huskies at the 30. Here's Billy Parks. Parks 
Hits the left side, gets to the 34-yard line. Mercer Hedgeman came up to make the tackle. Sam, that's an interesting story. Last year, Hedgeman a tight end. This year, converted to a linebacker. Well, it's going to take him a little while to learn the position. He probably had some experience somewhere along the line in high school at that linebacker position. We mentioned that Connecticut switched from the wishbone to the eye formation. In the wishbone, the quarterback makes the decision about 75% of the time as to what he's going to do with the football because he has the option on that triple option. Uh, Coach Tom Jackson wanted to take some of that pressure off his junior quarterback, Larry Korn. Second down and six from the 34. John Fodor in motion. Long count and a delay of game penalty. They'll be marched off against the Connecticut Huskies. That'll be a five-yard infraction. There's your official, the head man, referee with the white cap, John Safi from the ECAC. Well, the strength of the Connecticut team is definitely on defense. They have all 11 starters returning. Uh, 14 of the 20 different players who started at least one game for Connecticut last year uh, have returned. So they're in pretty good shape. Nice to have that gentleman back, Jimmy Dumont, All-American linebacker. This is final season for the Scarlet Knights from Levittown, Pennsylvania. Sam said it in the open. Every coach would love to have 11 Jim Dumonts on a football team. Second down and 12 for the Huskies. Again, Fodor comes in motion to the right. Twins to the right side of the field. Delayed handoff and real good hit by Craig Hopter on Billy Parks. Hopter broke into the backfield and made the stop. Frank Burns had spoken about Greg Hoffner during the week. He had played tackle last year. However, they thought he was their third best defensive lineman. They put him over the center. He hit the center, straightened him up, was in good position, went around the block, actually, but the play was slow in developing, giving him ample time to go around the center's block and still come in and make a picture-perfect tackle, put his head right in the numbers. That's where you want to put it. Connecticut's offense is fairly green from a year ago. Rutgers, meanwhile, has returned eight starters. Hoffner played behind Bill Pakel last season. Third and 11, Horn to throw. And the pass incomplete at the 40-yard line intended to Brian McGillicuddy and Carl Howard back cover. Well, that's what you want to do when you have a quarterback that perhaps does not have the best arm or an ideal throwing arm. You want to roll him out and put the threat on the defense. A guy like Korn will run the ball probably as often as he passes the football. So Neil Govin will come into the ball game for the Connecticut Huskies. Govin, a 5'9 senior from Wethersfield, Connecticut, averaged 36.7 yards per kick last year. The deep man for Rutgers, number 17, James Shedneck, who is just a freshman. Govin just gets it away. Ball bounces at the 38, takes a Rutgers bounce, and the Scarlet Knights will start with excellent field position at the 41-yard line. Looked like Bill Houston might have had an opportunity to uh, block that kick, but afraid of a penalty, he slowed up. Here's the Rutgers offense. The big man in the center is Joe DiGilio, and the returning right guard, John Owens, is a good one. Tight end, Alan Andrews, we talked about in our open. Starting quarterback is Jack LaFrairie. Dwayne Hooper gets the nod at tailback over Albert Smith. Vernon Williams, the fullback, and Andrew Baker and Boris Pendergrass are your wide receivers. Rutgers will do a lot of shifting this year. Andrews goes tight to the left side now. First and 10 from the 41. Rutgers first offensive play of the season. The pass complete to Allen Andrews, fumbles the football, but quickly gets it back at the 47. Tackle on the play made by All-American candidate John Dorsey. I, uh, he's got a big target now. Alan Andrews, 6'5", 220 pounds. Releases from his tight end position, breaks to the outside, and as you had said, uh, Bruce, he momentarily fumbled the football but recovered it. They spot the ball at the 48. It'll be second down and three. Andrews from Succasuna, New Jersey, a 6'5", junior. Out of the eye this time. Twins to the left side. Now Baker goes in motion. The Prairie running the option, keeps the ball, has a first down, and down to the 39-yard line of Connecticut. That is something we rarely saw last season. Matter of fact, we haven't seen it here on the banks of the old Raritan in a long time. The option play, you know, Sam. Well, it's hard to tell if this is an option. You see, he doesn't, do well, he does move down the line of scrimmage. Now, there he has the option of pitching out to his tailback, number 44, or keeping the football himself. He chose not to pitch out to Dwayne Hooper and picked up good yardage on his own. 
quarterback making the decision. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. The Prairie to throw on first, has plenty of time, sets up, throws across the middle to Andrews, and Allen is down to the 33 before John Dorsey made the stop. Well, Rutgers has come out uh, throwing the football. They threw on the first play from scrimmage, and here on the third play, Frank Burns was very uh, honest about his offensive philosophy. He says he likes to stay balanced and take what the defense gives you, but he knows he has to pass because of their schedule. There's the Connecticut five-man front. The two linebackers are both outstanding in Hargreaves and Dorsey, and the deep backs all intact from a year ago, and McIntosh, Donato, Latham, and Porter. Second down and four for Rutgers out of the I formation this time. Here's Dwayne Hooper, the tailback. Hooper to the 31-yard line, short of a first down by about two yards. And a tackle was made by John Dorsey. Because Rutgers is the favorite here today, and Frank Burns may not have to throw the football as often against Connecticut as he will throughout the remaining uh, portion of the schedule. But if he feels that he's got to throw against the uh, four bowl teams that Rutgers faces this uh, season, he might as well do it at uh, you know right right from the start against Connecticut. Split receivers, both sides of the field, out of the eye, third and short yardage. La Prairie. Looked like it might have been a slightly busted play, but LaFerry battles and gets the first down before Vernon Hargreaves pulled him down. It is a first down for Rutgers. Sam, I wanted to elaborate on that option for a moment. Rutgers has not used an option in recent years here, and one of the things Dick Curl, the offensive coordinator, says he would like to do is use LaFerry in somewhat of an option situation, not the triple threat as the wishbone, more of a double threat with your tailback. Well, he certainly can run with a football, and you want to put as much pressure on the defense as you possibly can with a quarterback's ability to run with it. First and 10, Scarlet Knights, Connecticut, 28-yard line. LaFrary, play-action pass, throws. It's incomplete, intended for Andrew Baker, and the ball was almost picked off by Jerry McIntosh. Again, there was a partial rollout, very similar to what we saw Rutgers doing last year. Almost all of their passing last year came off of play-action or rollout-type passes, where, again, LaFrary... Uh, is it's preferable that he throws the football, but if he gets in a bind, obviously it's easier to run when you're out on the flat and putting pressure on those linebackers. What do they do? Come up and cover the quarterback or drop back into coverage? Second and 10, the handoff to Vernon Williams, the fullback, and Williams gets maybe two yards to the left side. Hargreaves and Dorsey made the tackle. Eight minutes, 50 seconds, first quarter of play. We're scoreless in the season opener from Rutgers Stadium. Now, this is their outstanding linebacker, All-American last year, Don Dorsey, did a good job there, took on the blocker, got below the offensive lineman, I believe it was John Owens, who was trying to block him, had good position, and came in on the tackle. I'd try to cut a guy like Dorsey once in a while. Third and eight at the 25. Pro set, LaFrary back to throw, sets in the pocket, throws across the middle, complete to Andrews. Good second effort by Alan Andrews, fighting for the first down at the 18-yard line. Alan Andrews switched to tight end last year. LaFrary dropping back into the pocket. Not a deep drop, about six, five, six steps. Andrews alone over the middle. And when you're throwing over the middle like that between the linebackers, that's when you have to have something on the football. Well, there's 8.14 left in the first quarter of play. The Scarlet Knights are marching. No score from Rutgers Stadium. <laughs> Rutgers short of a first down, and on fourth down and one, the Scarlet Knights will make their first big decision whether they will go for it or not. The ball is spotted at well, the 18-yard line. I think perhaps even if they had Alex Falsinelli back, they might in this instance uh, go for the first down. They're up against a club that they should beat. And it's fourth and one and, you know, good field position. If, even if they don't make it, they're not going to be in that bad uh, stead. Rutgers will go for it. Fourth and one, three men in the backfield. The handoff goes to Albert Smith. He fumbles the football, would not have made it anyway. The ball picked up by Matt Latham. And the Connecticut Huskies will take over from their own 21-yard line. From Rutgers Stadium, this is Rutgers football on Madison Square Garden Cable Vision. Connecticut.
Connecticut takes over. First and 10 from their own 21-yard line. Billy Parks gets the handoff on first down. Parks has a first down across the 30 to the 35-yard line. Billy Parks picking up 14 on the first play of this drive. Tackle made by Mercer Hedgeman and Dan Errico. Parks just a sophomore. He and uh, the offensive tackle and a couple of others are the only non-letterman. Well, he and the offensive tackle are the only non-letterman uh, starting for Connecticut. There are several others who earn letters who are starting for the first time on that offensive unit. First and 10 at the 35 for the Huskies. Twins to the right side of the field out of the power eye formation. The tailback is Billy Parks. Larry Korn hands to Parks. Parks hits the left side of the line and uses muscle as he gets four yards on the play. Bill Beschner, Dan Errico in on the tackle. Well, they've run two plays in a row to the strength of the Rutgers defense, the side where we have Jim Dumont and Bob Dumont, and of course, Bill Beschner, uh, an outstanding defensive lineman. There's a look at the Rutgers sideline. The Scarlet Knights unable to capitalize in their First big drive of the football game on fourth and one at the Connecticut 18 yard line. Albert Smith coughed up the football and Connecticut got it back. This is second down and six for the Huskies. Hitch out to Billy Parks. Parks goes nowhere this time. A fumble. Dan Errico made the hit. There's no signal from the referee. Perhaps the ball was blown dead at the 40. And once again, they run to their left at what should be the strength of the Rutgers defense. Good block on Jim Dumont. However, he gets off the ground and gets a piece of the ball carrier. The uh, other back, Mike Harkins, came in low and knocked uh, Jim Dumont off his feet. There's a look at the Connecticut Huskies under first year head coach Tom Jackson. He was the assistant coach at Connecticut before that. He becomes the 25th head football coach at the University of Connecticut. Third and five and Korn rolls out. Gets back to the line of scrimmage and goes down before Jimmy Dumont made the hit. So Connecticut now on fourth down will have to punt the ball away. Well, uh, Jim Dumont and several others in the secondary came up to make the tackle, but it was Barry Bukowski, the left defensive end, who is a true defensive end. He will be rushing the passer more often or rarely dropping back into coverage as opposed to Bob Dumont, who will drop into coverage when it is a pass. Barry Bukowski came across and stripped the interference, and we have an injured uh, Rutgers player on the field. Bruce, I didn't get his number. I believe that's 63, Craig Hoffner, who is the nose guard. Hoffner is a senior from Maple Shade, New Jersey, and from here, it looks as though number 63 is down there in the field. They're looking at that knee, and that is never good. No, never good. Always better to have an ankle injury. You can really help an ankle. Well, first of all, they re recover a lot faster than knees, but a good tape job will uh, assist a, a, an injured ankle, but you really can't do anything for the knee. You can put the brace on it, but all the brace will do is prevent further injuries. Behind the Hoffner, we have... Uh, Randy Hannes, a junior, 6'2", 245, and George Pickell, also a junior. Of course, George, uh, Bill Pickell's the younger brother, and last time I heard, uh, Bill was doing very well out with the uh, Los Angeles, almost Raiders. at Oakland, the Los, Los Angeles it. Raiders. They were really pleased with him. I had seen him during the preseason and it looked like he filled out to me. Evidently, they got him on, well, he had always lifted weights, but even more so, and really looked in great shape. A nice crowd on opening day at Rutgers Stadium. This year, the Scarlet Knights will play three home football games at this facility and three at Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. No score with 5.57 left in the first quarter of play between Rutgers and Connecticut from Rutgers Stadium. This is Rutgers football on Madison Square Garden Cablevision. Number 63, Craig Hoffner, starting nose guard, 6'3", junior, 6'3", senior, I should say, being helped from the field, and that is not a good sign. Now, with the schedule that Rutgers plays this year, obviously you cannot afford to have any injuries. Fourth down, and the Connecticut Huskies will be punting the ball away to James Sheddendeck, who is a freshman. Back to punt, Neil Gauvin gets off a beauty. Shed neck back to his 12-yard line. Looks to pick up some blocking, has some room to his left. Gets to the 20, breaks to the outside, stays in bounds at the 30. Shed neck to the 40-yard line, and Rutgers with excellent field position, but hold everything, a flag all the way back at 
the 17 yard line and usually on a punt return it indicates clipping against the returning team but let's wait and see fine running by shed neck and he also had some good blocking a big alley off to his left. clipping on the run back i'll get it for you i'll get it for you it is a pretty return, though. Oh, you can see it. You see, he picks up a couple of blocks here. Uh, hard to get numbers. It happens so quickly. Actually, Hart, number 57, uh, Mercer Hedgeman, had a good block on that Connecticut player, but he had thrown it too soon. The player got up off the ground, but Shedneck was able to elude him for good yardage. The clip was charged against number 41, Tyrone Stowe. And so it will bring the ball all the way back to the Rutgers nine yard line. So the Scarlet Knights will start out much closer to their own goal. First and 10 at the nine, no score, 527 first quarter of play. Rutgers and Connecticut from Rutgers Stadium in the season opener for both teams. Jack LaPrairie at quarterback for Rutgers. First down, drops into the pocket, looks across the middle, going long for Baker. the Connecticut 35-yard line, and Baker is down inside the 30. Well, the, uh, the football hung up there like a uh, wounded duck, but it certainly got to Baker. Baker played it very well. Now watch Baker as he runs down the sideline. He sort of slows up as he sees that the football may be somewhat underthrown and then puts on the burst of speed, has good position, keeps his eye on the football. Just you can't ask for a better a better execution than that. Not bad coverage by Shane Porter, although perhaps uh, he could have leaped as that ball approached a little better. Baker stepped out of bounds at the 43. That's where Rutgers will put it in play first and 10. Baker goes in motion to the right. The Prairie hands off to the fullback, Vernon Williams. Williams gets to the 39-yard line. Vernon Williams, a 6'2 sophomore from Amherst, Massachusetts, has excellent speed just a couple of years ago. He was the top sprinter in Western Massachusetts with a 9800. Frank Burns high on Vernon Williams. In fact, his father uh, had coached a track here at Rutgers. He uh, organized the run for lunch bunch. <laughs> First and make that second down and seven for the Scarlet Knights. LaPrairie looks, throws, nice execution. First down, Baker at the 23-yard line. Nice execution indeed because he was looking to his left. He was looking at Alan Andrews. Let's see if we can pick that up. He takes the snap once again. Straight drop back pass, not a deep pass. Look to his left initially and then turn to his right. And he certainly found the right man because uh, the receiver to his left, Alan Andrews, was well covered. Uh, Baker did have position in that zone between the two defenders. Rutgers on the march at the 23 of Connecticut. No score. 423. First quarter of play. Vernon Williams gets to the 20 yard line. And there's a loose football. Let's see if the play was blown dead. It very well may have been. And Rutgers does keep possession. Rutgers having some difficulty in running the football, especially up the middle, and that's where you would expect them to have difficulty. This Connecticut defense, as we indicated, is a an experienced uh, veteran ball club with the strength of the defense definitely in the middle. The two middle linebackers, John Dorsey and Vernon Hargraves. Lamont Green replaces John Owens at right guard for the Scarlet Knights. Morris Pendergrass comes wide left, Baker wide right on second down and eight. The Prairie with time, fires complete to Andrews. Andrews to the 14-yard line. Tackle made by Norm Myers and John Dorsey. Sam, you know how it's easy to pick up Alan Andrews because he's always cradling that football as soon as he catches it. Yeah, you know, they teach your receivers to catch the football with the hands. However, when you're catching a football over the middle like that and you have your back turned to the defenders and there were three people in the area, you know you're going to get hit, and that's when you want to use your body to protect the football, to cradle the football. Nice catch by Alan Andrews using all 6'5 uh, and 220 pounds. Full house backfield on third and one. LaPrairie keeps it straight up the middle. And it looks
looks to be a first down for Rutgers at the 13-yard line. Dave Gracon back to make the tackle, and there goes number 63, nose man Craig Hoffner of Rutgers into the ambulance, and that is something that I'm sure Coach Frank Burns and his staff are very concerned about. I think uh, Craig Hoffner is somewhat concerned about it this time also. That first knee injury or any knee injury is always a frightening experience. All football players are aware of the, the tremendous danger of any type of knee injury. A first down for Rutgers. That was a tough yard. That, uh, that one yard for a first down inside the 15, 20 yard line is always the toughest yardage to get on a football field. Frank Burns, the winningest coach in Rutgers football history, and as you can see, ranks very highly among other national coaches. Number 11, I believe. Oh, it was, I didn't, wasn't watching. That's right. Wide to the left, Baker. Wide to the right, Pendergrass. First and 10, Scarlet Knights at the 13. Here's Hooper. Hooper goes nowhere. Well, Vernon uh, Williams was the guy, I believe, that missed a block. He didn't even attempt to block that outside linebacker or defensive end in this case. Was that the number 34, Mark Michaels, coming in there? Well, either way, uh, Vernon Williams just was not playing heads up football. He ran right by him and that was his man, the man that made the tackle. Now we have another injured Rutgers player down on the field. That's number 76, right tackle Mike Brenner, who is just a sophomore from Winthrop, Massachusetts. He is the biggest man on that offensive line, goes six foot, 280 pounds. So another concern for Rutgers football fans, but Brenner appears to be okay. Following Mike Brenner's injury, our television crew incurred some technical problems and we were unable to bring you the action at the end of the first quarter. We sincerely apologize for this inconvenience. At the point we left you, Rutgers had second and 10 on the Yukon 12. Two ensuing passes by Jack LaPrairie were incomplete. And on fourth and 10, Tom Angstead kicked a 30-yard field goal to give Rutgers a 3-0 lead. Following the Rutgers kickoff, UConn moved 37 yards in six plays when their drive stalled and they had to punt. After this commercial message, we'll pick up the action in the beginning. 10, 14 minutes, 45 seconds, just opening the second quarter of play. Rutgers leading three to nothing on the field goal by Angstad from 30 yards. Now this Connecticut defensive unit has four seniors, but all of the people on the defensive unit were starters last season. The only scoring play in the ball game, a 30-yard field goal by junior Tom Angstead from Annandale, New Jersey. First and 10 Scarlet Knights from their own 18. Lone setback this time is Albert Smith, who has replaced Dwayne Hooper in the backfield, and Smith goes straight up the middle, gets maybe a couple of yards. Albert Smith is a sophomore from Union, New Jersey. Last year, he led the Scarlet Knights with 466 yards rushing on 130 carries. Frank Burns was telling us that he thinks he's a good receiver, Albert Smith. In fact, uh, he has confidence in all of his backs in their ability to catch the football. Second down and eight yards to go for Rutgers. Double tight end in the ball game right now. We have Allen Andrews and Scott Drake. Andrews left, Drake right. One setback, that's Albert Smith. La Prairie to throw. Fires incomplete intended for Boris Pendergrass. The ball thrown above Pendergrass and McIntosh back on the play. The Prairie getting good pass protection. Once again, throwing from the drop back or show pass or from the pocket, the throw type passing attack where the quarterback drops back sometimes uh, as little as three or four yards, other times maybe seven yards. In most instances, the Prairie has been taking the, the shorter drop, about five steps. Third down, eight yards to go for Rutgers at their own 20. Andrew Baker wide to the left. Boris Pendergrass wide right. Vernon Williams, the lone setback. LaPrairie sets into the pocket. Throws across the middle, complete to Scott Drake. And Drake has a first down at the 32-yard line. Scott Drake is a freshman from Park Ridge, New Jersey. And that is his first collegiate reception. Once again, notice the pass protection. The Prairie has all the time in the world to sit there and wait for Drake to break over the middle. And he's right on target. The people downfield were pretty well covered. I believe that Drake was a secondary receiver in that instance. Sam, but there's one area that Rutgers has impressed 
I believe it is, and that offensive line's blocking. Especially on the pass. They haven't overwhelmed the Connecticut defense with a running game. That's for sure. On first and 10, Albert Smith goes straight up the middle, and there's the power from Smith. Six foot, 215 this year, and he pulls his way down to the 40-yard line of Rutgers. Because Rutgers lost their two starting offensive tackles uh, from last year's team, Rich Spitzer and Tony Chella. The, uh, the strength of the team this year on the offensive line anyway is right up the middle. Do, Joe DiGiglio uh, being their outstanding offensive lineman. John Owens, the right guard, and Clement Udovich also with experience. Second down and three from the 40. Smith remains the lone setback for Rutgers, and Smith gets the call. Albert doesn't get anywhere. Smith missed all of spring practice with a postseason shoulder operation. Says he's about 90, 95 percent right now. He and Dwayne Hooper are pretty much uh, on an even basis at this point. I believe that Hooper started the football game, but uh, Coach uh, Dick Curl has been alternating. Them. Hooper might be considered the better blocking back and Smith the better runner. Third and short yardage from the 41. The Prairie to throw. Has plenty of time, steps in, throws complete to Drake. Another Rutgers first down at the 45-yard line. John Dorsey and Vernon Hargreaves both in on the tackle. Well, the Prairie making the right decisions. Connecticut is rushing just three people. They're in a 5-2 uh, a defense, and they're just rushing the nose guard and the two defensive tackles. The two defensive ends are playing it like the pros play the 3-4. They're dropping back into coverage. You see that he had good protection, uh, something you would expect with just three people rushing, five people blocking on them. Spot the ball at the 44, first and 10. The Prairie back to throw on first down. Again, has good time. Nice route complete to Boris Pendergrass. Hargraves made the tackle, but Pendergrass ran a fine pattern on the right side of the field. When they're in a zone defense, as Connecticut is, what you've got to do is, is be patient and take those hookups or curl patterns. You see, once again, the Prairie good protection, waiting for Pendergrass to go downfield, approach the cornerback, and then come back toward the line of scrimmage between the cornerback and those linebackers spread across the field. First and 10, Rutgers at the Connecticut 45-yard line. Once again, Rutgers moving well with the football, but a strong play in the backfield as Albert Smith is knocked down by Vernon Hargreaves. Sam, so far in this football game, Rutgers has thrown the ball well, but they have been unable to run the football. Well, those two inside linebackers, watch Hargraves here. Now, he just bursts through there, and, you know, he doesn't have a chance. Smith doesn't have an opportunity to go anywhere with the football. He had started movement toward the line of scrimmage before the snap of the football, and by the time Smith got it, Hargraves was all over him. He also uh, made all conference last year, along with the other inside linebacker, John Dorsey, who got most of the publicity. Second down at 16, La Prairie to throw, looks across the middle, complete to Andrews. Andrews getting four yards on the play. Lou Donato came up to make the hit, and Billy Hendricks was there for the Connecticut Huskies. Once again, La Prairie going to the right man because that time the linebacker on that side was coming on the play. He was, he was putting pressure on the passer, attempting to get some, uh, some penetration, and La Prairie threw into the area that he vacated and perhaps would have been in had he dropped back into zone coverage. Third and 11 for Rutgers. 10-13, second quarter. Rutgers leading Connecticut 3-0. Out of the I formation, Baker wide right. Pendergrass wide left. LaFrary goes for Baker, and it's incomplete. That is the kind of pass that Andrew Baker will pull in 95% of the time, but that time the ball went right through his hands, and it will bring up a punting situation for Rutgers. First punt of the afternoon. And junior Gary Liska checks in for the Scarlet Knights. Liska from New Canaan, Connecticut. Punted 73 times a year ago. Back deep for the Connecticut Huskies. Shane Porter and Matt Latham. Rutgers has moved the ball, but they have been unable to push the ball into the end zone. Low snap, Liska gets it off. Porter, fair catch at the 10. Makes the catch, and that's where the Huskies will put it into play. 9.55 remaining, second quarter of play. Rutgers three, Connecticut nothing.
Chris Beck, Sam DeLuca back at Rutgers Stadium in Piscataway, New Jersey, Connecticut. First and 10 from their own 12 yard line. And on the first play, Larry Korn hands off to Mike Harkins, and Harkins gets to the 16 yard line. Well, both teams having difficulty in running the football up the middle. Connecticut has had uh, some success, especially early in the game, running Billy Fox uh, to the outside. I'd like to repeat that nose guard Craig Hoffner left the game with an injury, and he has been replaced by number 50, George Pacal, a junior from Maspeth, New York, brother of Bill Pacal, former Rutgers star. Second down and five for Connecticut. In motion, tight end Mike Walsh. Hand off to Billy Parks. Parks cracks the right side of the line, but he is gang tackled by Jeff Cordilla and Barry Bukowski. Because when a team has to start inside the 10 yard line or just about the 10 yard line, it puts tremendous pressure on the quarterback and pretty much dictates to the offense what they can do. Very hard to, uh, to throw the football inside your 10. Although Rutgers did it very successfully uh, on their one scoring drive when they started from their nine and hit a long pass on the first play from scrimmage. Third and two. Again, Walsh goes in motion. Horn back to throw. Fires intended for Walsh, and it's incomplete. So Connecticut has been unable to move the football. Rutgers has been able to move the football, but they haven't really been able to capitalize, and hence the 3-0 Rutgers lead. Barry Bukowski, the defensive end for the uh, Rutgers team, was putting some pressure on quarterback Korn on that last play. Pass was poorly thrown, however. Neil Gauvin in to punt for the Huskies, and Jim Shedneck back deep for Rutgers, waiting for the ball at his own 40. 31 first half Rutgers three Connecticut nothing Govan hits another beauty sends Shedneck back to his 28 yard line he's to the 35 and he goes down at the 38 yard line great individual tackle by Mike McNamara Rutgers leading three nothing and we'll be back with more Rutgers football in a moment Introducing the ColecoVision Super Action Controller Set. With it, your vision expands. Now play all ColecoVision games and new Super Action Baseball, Boxing, or Football. Plot strategies in advance, offense or defense. It's the first controller to move four individual players at once. And you get Super Action Baseball with multi-screens as a bonus. Expand your vision with the Super Action Controller Set. Because your vision is our vision. ColecoVision. Sometimes it's reassuring to know your car will perform well. That's why stunt driver Michelle Slate relies on mobile detergent gasoline. After all, a car with a clean carburetor performs better. It's as simple as that. Mobile detergent gasoline for your everyday driving needs. Rutgers with a first and 10 from their own 38-yard line, leading the football game 3-0. Jack LaPrairie has been in there all the way at quarterback. Back to throw and first down, throwing long for Baker. And a diving try by Boris Pendergrass, not Andrew Baker, and it's incomplete. Well, I think that's an indication of what we're going to see Rutgers doing more of this year with the emphasis on the pass. Uh, I think primarily because of the tough schedule that they're going to play. And that's where the trend is anyway, because of the rules changes in 1981. Uh, it makes it easier to pass because of the offensive line's ability to pass protect. And Rutgers has certainly come out throwing on first down. That's Mike Brenner who was shaken up and is now on the sideline. Brenner, the starting right tackle. The very right the option is second down and goes nowhere as Connecticut called the team meeting on Jack LaFerry's body on that foot. Yeah, they were ready for that one. LaFerry had picked up good yardage in the first quarter on that option. Once again, he turns semi-fake to the fullback going up the middle, rolls out to his left with an option of either running or passing the football. He never had an opportunity to pass. He had to run on that one. He certainly didn't get any yardage on the play. Donald Smith led the charge for Connecticut. Third and 12 for the Scarlet Knights from the 36. The Prairie steps in, throws complete to Andrews, but way short of a first down as Lou Donato came up to make a fine hit. Down Andrews and Rutgers will have to punt their way. Thanks, Sam. Rutgers. 
Rutgers a 1A school and Connecticut a Division I AA school. And Rutgers has dominated the game maybe, yes, in terms of statistics, but not on the scoreboard. Well, they haven't gotten the crucial yardage when they've had to. In third down situations, they've done well on first down situations. They've had the ball 12 times, uh, averaging, oh, I guess about seven or eight yards on first down conversions or first down plays. Gary Liska back to punt for Rutgers. Sales a high punch. Shane Porter waits for it. a trap block. I believe that was Yudovic coming over, and that was the key right there. Yudovic, he didn't get a clean block, but certainly you're not going to do that all the time. If that defensive end is crashing, coming across the line of scrimmage, all you have to do is brush him. All you have to do is just keep your body between he and the ball carrier. First and ten, Rutgers at the 13-yard line. Pendergrass wide to the right. Inside handoff to Beleza. Beleza to the nine-yard line. Tackle by Dave Gracone. Well, was uh, the uh, backup fullback from North Brunswick, a sophomore, six feet, 195 pounds. Second down and seven. Sam, this is where I always find it becomes increasingly difficult to score when you're inside the 10. Now you've got to create things. You can't just get conservative. Everything tightens up there. Those linemen know that they are likely to run with a football and they're digging in. Out of the eye formation, the Prairie runs the option, keeps the ball, gets maybe two on the play. Tackle made by Pat Miller and Vernon Hargreaves. As LaPrairie takes the uh, handoff, he rolls out from his left. Again, he has the option of handing off to the fullback, elects to keep the football and move out to his right. Not much yardage on the play, not much blocking up front. Rutgers calls a timeout, and Jack LaPrairie comes over to confer with Dick Pearl and head coach Frank Burns and George DeLeon. Five minutes, 30 seconds left in this first half. Rutgers is driving, and they lead in this football game three to nothing.
Madison Square Garden Cablevision, the network that brings legends to living rooms in the world of sports, now also presents diversified entertainment programming, including classic television spy adventures with Patrick McNee and Diana Rigg in The Avengers, trendsetters of the art, fashion, and music world on Andy Warhol's TV, and some of the biggest names in the entertainment world with The Jonathan Schwartz Show, all on the Madison Square Garden Network. Consult your local listings for time and channel or contact your local cable system. More and more people are coming to Madison Square Garden in groups because of the convenience in reserving seats and special savings. If you have a group of 25 or more, you can get assistance from our group sales department. This applies to the circus, the Bugs Bunny Sports Spectacular, plus dozens of sports and entertainment events in Madison Square Garden and the Felt Forum. Call the Garden's group sales office at 212-563-8080. That's 212-563-8080. Bruce Beck, Sam DeLuca back at Rutgers Stadium in Piscataway, New Jersey on a very hot, humid afternoon. Temperature around 95 degrees. Rutgers leads Connecticut 3-0. They're on the march. Third down and four at the Connecticut six-yard line. Rutgers out of the eye. LaPrairie sprints out. Cuts to the inside. Does not get enough for the first down. Gets to the five-yard line, and now it brings up a very interesting fourth down and two. Fine play by Mark Michaels, the son of Walt Michaels, the former coach of the Jets. Michaels, uh, not a very big defensive end, only about six feet, 202 pounds. The Connecticut coaches say they've never had a brighter, a smarter football player. I'm not talking about in the classroom now. I'm talking about on the football field, and certainly Mark Michaels played that well. He, he was not fooled like by La Prairie. Uh, he, he just played the fake well and, of course, made a big play for Connecticut. Rutgers will go for a field goal. It'll be a 22-yard attempt. Tom Angstead on to try it again. Angstead has hit one earlier today. Hudak holds. The kick is up. The tie up. It's perfect. So Tom Angstead has produced all the Rutgers scoring this afternoon. And the Scarlet Knights lead Connecticut 6-0 with 4.41 remaining in the first half of play. Once again, a situation where Rutgers was in a good good position really to uh, to get a touchdown and I think that the Frank Burns would feel a lot better as would Dick Curl had they been uh, able to go in the seven instead of once again having to settle for three points I think however we should point out that uh, the strength of the Connecticut football team is that veteran defensive unit all 11 starters from last year have returned and they've got some good football players in there next week Rutgers takes on Boston College and All-American candidate Doug Flutie the clash at Giant Stadium will give Rutgers a chance to vindicate themselves from 1982's last second loss against the Eagles. Flutie has begun the season with the same magic he showed last year. Don't forget, Rutgers will meet Connecticut, will meet Boston College on Madison Square Garden Cablevision Saturday night at 10.30, Sunday at 9 a.m. Don't forget, top-notch college football all season long on Madison Square Garden Cablevision. Tom Angstead kicks off for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Ball is taken by number one. That's Dubos, Gary Dubose, and he returns it across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Connecticut will start there, first and 10, trailing six to nothing in the ball game. Good return, poor coverage by Rutgers. Once again, you'll see that the Rutgers players get bottled up. They have to keep equidistant uh, from each other as they go down that field. When the ball is kicked to their left like that, people have to move over and anticipate that the ball carrier is going to run straight up the field on the right side. They did not make the appropriate adjustments. Larry Korn leads out the Huskies from the 42, and Korn goes back to throwing first down. Korn throwing long down the middle, and he hits his big tight end, Mike Walsh. Walsh is down to the Rutgers 11-yard line. Dan Errico made the saving tackle a well-executed play. Yeah, that was a nice pass by Korn, the old jump pass. Looked like he jumps into the air as he releases the football. Uh, yep, he goes up a little bit. Doesn't look like he has much on it. I believe that Carl Howard misjudged the football. Carl Howard, number 26 in your picture there, it seemed as the ball was released and his relation to the uh, receiver Walsh that he would have an opportunity to deflect it. I can't understand why unless he did misjudge it. It was a fine reception by Walsh. Yes, good pass, but again, Howard was in good position. Walsh had to slow down so that, uh, you know, he should have had a piece of the football and been able to push it away or deflect it. First and 10 Huskies at the 11. 
And off Billy Parks, runs into a wall of players, breaks to the outside, and then is thrown down by Joe Corbin. Joe Corbin, a 5'11 senior from Penns Grove, New Jersey, got all of Billy Parks on that play, brings the ball back to the 13. Jim, Jim Dumont gets the first shot at Billy Parks. Watch him break in now into the backfield. I believe there he comes. And Dumont should have had that tackle. He lets uh, Parks get away from him, and he's not very happy with himself. But of course, uh, when you can stop the ball carrier's forward momentum like that, you would normally expect the other people on that defensive unit to be converging on him and gang tackling at that point. Larry Korn on second down rolls to his right, looking for a receiver, still looking, and it's tackled back at the 18 yard line. Number 59, Matt Bachman came busting through to make the play on quarterback Larry Korn. Fine play by Matt Bachman. He shows some speed here. Once again, Larry Korn getting Rutgers ready for Doug Flutie next week with that rollout. You see that Bachman just comes up. He's not impressed. He doesn't slow down and makes a fine tackle on the quarterback Larry Korn. So Connecticut had the ball down as far as the Rutgers 11. It's now back to the 17. Incidentally, this is a good warm-up for Rutgers uh, with picking up uh, Flutie next week. The quarterback from Boston College who rolls out a lot. Third down, and they keep the ball on the ground to Parks. Parks scoots down and out of bounds at the six-yard line. Perhaps surprised Rutgers with a running play on third and long. Bill Houston chased Parks out of bounds, but now Connecticut in a position to either go for the touchdown or go for three. Let's see what Tom Jackson decides. The ball is spotted at the seven. Six yards, and they can pick up a first down. Of course, seven yards for the touchdown, and Tom Jackson wants to think it over. So a timeout called by the Huskies with 2.23 left in the first half. Connecticut trailing six to nothing. Well, this is where the ability of a quarterback to run effectively with the football really puts tremendous pressure on that defensive unit inside the 15, 20-yard line. The linebackers normally play pass first. However, when the quarterback rolls out, they've got to be aware of the position of the quarterback, who's in front of him, and his ability to run with a football. Puts tremendous pressure on the entire defense, but particularly the linebackers. And as I said before, Bruce, uh, assuming that Rutgers gets by Connecticut and wins today, it will be a good prelude to what they're going to encounter next week at Boston College with Doug Flutie. Uh, probably getting as much publicity as any quarterback in the nation and his primary asset is his ability to run with a football and throw on the run. So Connecticut will try a field goal. Domingos Carlos is on. It will be a 25 yard attempt. Ball will be spotted at the 15. Ball is placed down and Carlos's kick is up and it is perfect. Domingos Carlos from Waterbury, Connecticut played two years with the nationally ranked Connecticut soccer team and then in 1981 transferred over to the football team and he is eighth on the all-time scoring list at this school. So Carlos puts the Huskies on the scoreboard as they cut Rutgers lead to 6-3. I think the Rutgers has to settle down now, and uh, I would like to see them, as I would like to see any football team do, establish the running game. I, I, although the, the pass has become increasingly more important since the rule changes allowing the offensive linemen to extend their arms and open their hands uh, when retreat blocking, this has certainly enhanced the passing game, and I think that coaches and teams are very wise to emphasize the pass and take advantage of the rules change you still have to have a balanced attack and in most instances the team that has more yardage on the ground is normally or usually the winner there's little number two domingos carlos set a yukon single game mark with four field goals last year in the win over new hampshire has kicked 22 field goals in the last two years and is as i mentioned eighth in the all-time school scoring list it's nice to have a kicker like carlos he puts it in play and booms it out of the end zone. That ball, 72 yards in the air. So Rutgers will start from their own 20-yard line, and they are in a dogfight. Scarlet Knights leading 6-3, to three, a flag down on that kickoff. Here's a look at the scoring drive. Four plays, 58 yards, the big pass play to the tight end, Mike Walsh and Carlos credited with a 24-yard field goal. Yeah. 
So a personal foul called against Rutgers, and this will start the team in a deeper hole. It always amazes me how a guy as small as Domingos Carlos, 5'7", 166 pounds, can get so much distance on that football when kicking the football. Evidently, the strength of the leg is not the answer. A soccer man his whole life until he <laughs> discovered the game of football. Uh, I asked uh, Bobby Howfield, who used to kick for the Jets for a while, he was a sidewinder, uh, and uh, he said it was the velocity of the pendulum. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, just the speed, of, you know, that I move my leg. That's the key, not the size or the strength of the leg. I never heard the foot compared to the pendulum. <laughs> first and 10 Rutgers from their own 10, leading 6-3 with 2.20 left in the first half. Baker goes in motion, and LaPrairie back to throw on first down. The Prairie throws the ball, and no one is near the football. Alan Andrews cut to the sideline. The Prairie was looking for Andrews to cut upfield, hence the errant throw. Rutgers has uh, three penalties for 47 yards. Connecticut just one penalty for five yards. However, I don't think that the penalties have really been a factor uh, in today's game. A matter of fact, for a first game, it's not too often that you see so few penalties. Mm -hmm. Indication that both teams are executing well for opening day. Second down and LaPrairie hands the ball off to Hooper. Hooper gets back to the line of scrimmage and that's all. Important to mention here that the penalty was marked off in this particular series. In other words, Rutgers needs to get all the way to the 30 yard line even though they started at the 10. So this brings up a third and 18. Long way to go for the Scarlet Knights, and if Connecticut gets the ball back, they could very well have excellent field position. Minute 40 left in the first half, still a lot of time. The Prairie to throw, has time, throws the ball long, Baker's out there, and it's incomplete. Baker guarded by Shane Porter, Baker tried to jump high to get the ball, lost his balance, went down, and Rutgers will have to punt it away on fourth down. Very little chance of completing that pass. Again, Connecticut rushing just three defensive linemen, the three interior people, the nose guard, and the two tackles. Everyone else, the defensive end, playing like linebackers in this uh, instance in a three-deep zone, and very little chance of completing the bomb in that situation. Gary Liska back in punt formation in his own end zone. Matt Latham drops back at the 50 to receive the punt. Liska hits a short punt. It bounces at the 42, takes a Rutgers bounce down to the Connecticut 42, and the ball goes out of bounds, and that's where Connecticut will put it in play. This program is authorized by Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this event, including the imposition of a charge for viewing the program without the express written consent of Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated, is prohibited. And the announcers on this telecast were selected by Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated. Coming up at halftime, we'll have a chat to talk with Rutgers football coach Frank Burns. And not about your conventional type of things. We're going to talk about plays and the derivation of plays and what goes into making plays. Stay with us at halftime. Pass is incomplete. Brian McGillicuddy pulled it in but was out of bounds. And the play will come back and set up a second and ten. And Sam, at halftime, you'll also have a chance to talk to a legend in the world of sports broadcasting. Boy, he is. I'm talking, we're talking about Marty Glickman, who is semi-retired now and doing the uh, Connecticut University games on radio. Uh, I tell you, in all the years in the business and around New York, I, I don't think I've ever heard anyone speak disparagingly about Marty Glickman. It's really amazing, especially in this business. You know, few people have good words about anyone else, and they all uh, admire and respect Marty Glickman. A legal procedure called against Connecticut, and it was declined by Rutgers. So stay with us at halftime. We'll have a chat with Rutgers coach Frank Burns about plays and where he gets his plays from. He'll tell us where he steals most of the plays from. And Sam will be talking to Marty Glickman. Plus, we'll have highlights and statistics, so stick around. Rutgers leading 6-3, a minute 15 left in the first half. It has not been a real exciting first half of play. No, it is not. Rutgers' offense has uh, really not got on track. 
Uh, they have not been able to run with the football. The Prairie has had a measure of success passing, but uh, they certainly have not had a balanced attack. David Scott in at fullback for Connecticut. Scott gets the call straight up the middle, and he ran into a wall in All-American Jim Dumont. Jimmy Dumont, who was a walk-on as a freshman, First team All East last year, honorable mention All America, 133 tackles last year, led the team, and he can do it all. 55 seconds, clock winding down, first half of play. Third and eight for the Huskies. Larry Carr loses the football, gets it back, and Connecticut will now have fourth and long. Yeah, Frank Burns had said to us during the week that sometimes Jim Dumont is over aggressive and that could mean one of two things either he overreacts to fakes uh, or he hits the blockers when he can avoid them and of course a linebacker really doesn't want to take on an offensive lineman if he can outrun him to the uh, to the football you want to just move and you want to have as little contact as possible unless that ball carrier is directly behind the runner. I really have to ask uh, Coach Burns what he meant by that, by being overly aggressive at times. Sam Rutgers has called a timeout here, hoping to get the ball back with 39 seconds to go and perhaps put the ball in the air for a couple of plays. But as of right now, it looks like the Scarlet Knights will take a 6-3 lead into the locker room at halftime. And I would think the coaching staff is not going to be all that pleased. No, I don't think so. I don't think that the offensive line is moving out. Uh, they've been pretty much stifled as far as the running attack is concerned, and hence the problem. That's, that's where it lies. The passing attack has been semi-successful. Neil Gauvin back in punt formation for Connecticut, standing at his own 35. Shedneck is back deep for Rutgers, and the ball was almost blocked by Houston. The ball goes out of bounds at the 14-yard line, and Rutgers will take over there with 33 seconds left in the first half of play. And now let's watch this acting, if you will, by Gauvin. Hmm. Let's see, Sam, will he go down now? <laughs> no, he did not go down. He By the way, thoughts. there is a new rule this year, Sam. I thought you'd like the description of this rule. Simulating roughing is an unfair act. In other words, if the punter goes down and has not been touched, he can be assessed a 15-yard penalty. And that's what seemed to go through the mind of the Connecticut punter on that last play. He spun around, and I think at that point he said, should I take the plunge, should I fall, or should I just stand up and I think he made the wise decision. Well, the Prairie's going to put it up. Throws for Baker. Baker has it complete and Rutgers gets to the 30-yard line where they have a first down. By the way, going back to some other rule changes concerning the punter, this year, if a player runs into the kicker but it's not flagrant, they will play the down over and a five-yard penalty will be assessed against the defense. It's different than roughing the kicker, which is an automatic first down and 15 yards. So this year, some different interpretations on the punting. It can be running into the kicker or roughing the kicker. Back to pass La Prairie on first down. He just throws it away. 23 seconds left in the half, and Rutgers with second and 10 from their own 30. Rutgers has uh, 141 yards passing 51 yards on the ground for a total of 176 yards. Connecticut, 47 yards passing, 58 yards rushing for a total of 105 yards. So we have not seen the explosive offenses. And that's not domination by one team no. either. No, certainly not. And a lot of the, that yardage for Rutgers came on a couple of long passes. Albert Smith, the tailback. Smith gets it on the draw. Smith straight ahead to the 40-yard line, very close to a first down. John Dorsey made the tackle along with Mark Michaels, who, as Sam mentioned earlier, is the son of former Jet coach Walt Michaels. Rutgers calling a timeout, and it is a little bit short of a first down. It will be third and inches. Because that was the biggest gain for Rutgers on the ground in the first half, and probably a reason why the, uh, the stats should not include yardage in the final one or two minutes of a half when uh, the defense is playing that prevent defense and will readily concede the six or seven yard pass or sometimes the run for six and seven yards. Everybody playing loose. It's really a pretty setting here at Rutgers. 
one of the few grass fields still remaining in excellent condition. Rutgers will play three home games here in 1983. We'll play three at Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, and we'll play five on the road. And you'll see all 11 exclusively this year on Madison Square Garden Cablevision. The Scarlet Knights looking to improve on the five and six record of a year ago. Third down and inches, 11 seconds left in the first half. LaPrairie gets the first down. And let's see if he gets his time out quickly. Connecticut not even putting their nose guard in a three-point stance. You'll notice he's standing in a two-point stance about two yards from the offensive center. They have just two defensive linemen down in that three-point stance, which is best to take on the offensive blocker and stop the running attack. Seven seconds left in the first half. Now four seconds. LaFerry throws it out of bounds, and Rutgers will have a chance, perhaps, for one Hail Mary with two seconds remaining in the first half of play. And it has not been an impressive showing by the Scarlet Knights here in their season debut. The three deep men for Connecticut on that last play were lined up 30 to 35 yards downfield. The ball is on the 42. The deep safety is lined up on his own 20-yard oh, line. Here's the final play of the first half. LaPrairie throwing long for Baker, and it is intercepted. Picked off by Corey Garrett. Garrett across the 50, and he is at the 40-yard line, and that is where play will end here in the first half. Connecticut did just what Rutgers would like to have done on that Hail Mary, tip it up to another player, and one Connecticut player tipped it into the hands of another one. So that is the end of the first half of play. The score, Rutgers 6, Connecticut 3. Stay with us for our halftime show here on Rutgers football. On that Where the big difference comes. Rutgers with 141 yards, riding the arm of Jack LaPrairie, Connecticut with only 47. And Rutgers in total yards with an advantage of almost 2 to 1. Turnovers in the football game. Rutgers 2, Connecticut 1. Rutgers knocked on the door several times, but came up only with two field goals in that first half of play. Scarlet Knights lead the University of Connecticut Huskies 6-3. We'll be back with the third quarter action in just a moment. If you own ColecoVision, you already own a powerful state-of-the-art computer that gives you the arcade experience with the newest arcade games like Donkey Kong Jr., Looping, Pepper 2, Time Pilot, Mr. Do, Space Fury, Frontline, arcade controls like Turbo, the Roller Controller, and new Super Action Sports. And soon you'll plug in Atom, the revolutionary ColecoVision family computer module with new super games, keyboard, and printer. ColecoVision, the only system you'll ever need. X-16 right. At my football school, I teach the finer points of the game. And that training doesn't end on the field. Brute 33 left. And I show them how Brute 33 antiperspirant solid helps keep you dry and gives you long-lasting deodorant protection. Brute 33 right. And it's got the great smell of Brute. I teach my guys everything I know. Well, almost everything. Make every day your Brute day with Brute 33 deodorants and antiperspirants. Still 30 minutes of football to be played. The Scarlet Knights of Rutgers lead the Huskies of Connecticut 6-3. Three field goals, the entire scoring in that first half. A beautiful look at Rutgers Stadium. An excellent crowd this afternoon for the home opener. But I'll tell you, temperatures up near the high 90s. And I am informed that it's a lot hotter in the stands than it is in the booth. And it's a lot hotter on the field than it is in the stands. And you can't believe the breeze up on the roof. That was the only place that was semi-cool. <laughs> By the way, a couple of injuries uh, for Rutgers in the first half. Craig Hoffner, the starting nose guard, tore ligaments in his right knee. And he's been sent to the hospital. And Brenner, the right tackle, sprained his right knee. He is expected back in the second half if needed. So the big blow to Rutgers, starting nose man Craig Hoffner, perhaps out for the entire season because that is a devastating injury. Yes, it is. Rutgers will start first and 10 from their own 20-yard line following that booming kickoff by Domingos Carlos, who may be the best offensive weapon on this Connecticut team. 
This is the home opener for Rutgers, the season opener for both clubs. Rutgers plays Division 1A football, Connecticut 1AA, which is indicative of the size of the home stadium, also the type of schedule and other things. Rutgers on first down. Allen Andrews catches the ball for six yards, the 26. John Dorsey made the tackle. And going back to that 1A, 1A is the more competitive, uh, more difficult schedule. A matter of fact, this is the only 1A school that Connecticut will play all year long. So that gives you an idea of where they look at Rutgers on their schedule. And Coach Burns' statement during the week certainly has added meaning now when asked if uh, he should beat the University of Connecticut. He says yes, but shouldn't have uh, Mississippi beaten Mississippi State and shouldn't Florida State beat East Carolina. Second down, five for the Scarlet Knights. And the handoff to Albert Smith gets maybe three yards on that last carry. Rutgers has had a problem running the football. That has been their biggest problem today. And of course, as we said before, you know, Frank Burns said he's going to put the emphasis on the pass this year. He likes to have a balanced attack. He likes to take what the defense offers. But because of the schedule, because of the fact that Rutgers is facing once again four teams that went to bowls last year, he knows he has to pass and pass effectively. Third and three for the Scarlet Knights. The Prairie straight drop back. Throws complete to Andrews. First down at the 31. John Dorsey and Vernon Hargreaves in on the tackle. He's certainly taking, Jack LaFerry is, what the defense is offering. Once again, rushing just three people uh, on the passer, dropping the defensive ends. In effect, they are linebackers in this defense. This is a 3-4 and not a 5-2 defense, the way Connecticut is playing it. And he's throwing underneath those linebackers. They're taking deep drops. First and 10 at the 32. LaFerry back to throw. Fires for Baker, incomplete. No flag down. Covering on the play was number nine, Jerry McIntosh. It'll bring up second down and 10. Well, that time they rushed four people, Connecticut did, dropping seven into a coverage. Rutgers, on the other hand, kept in the offensive back, so he had just three receivers downfield, once again being covered by seven people. There you see the Connecticut defensive coach giving signals the uh, to the coordinator, defensive coordinator. Excuse me, Sam, is Brian Usher. So Brian Usher and Jim Pletcher are both considered the defensive coordinators for Connecticut. Second down and straight up the middle goes Vernon Williams, rather Lenny Beleza, and he picks up a couple of yards. And now some teams have attempted to do this with their offensive unit, the offensive coordinator sending in signals, but it's just too difficult. On defense, however, you're rather limited. You don't have the wide, that's a rather unusual <laughs> signal, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> you don't have the wide variety. You don't have the wide variety of, uh, of plays that the offense, you know, can run off. Normally you have maybe 30 or 40 plays on an active list for each game on offense. There may be as many as six or seven different defenses. Third and eight. The Prairie has time. Now he's forced out of the pocket, and he's going to keep the football. He will be short of a first down, gets a yard on the play. And again, Dorsey in on the tackle along with Bill Hendricks. Let's see what he does this time. Let's see if we can figure them out. I doubt it. You never can. But he's rather adamant in his delivery of the signals anyway. I think, I think that last signal was we stopped him. Nice work. <laughs> Fourth down, and Rutgers will punt it away. Gary Liska back at his own 20. And dropping back deep is Matt Latham. So Rutgers in their first possession of the second half, unable to move the football. Another low snap. Liska right, gets this right. one away. High but short. Latham, fair catch, 26. Huskies will put it in play first and 10. 11.56 in the third quarter. Rutgers leading Connecticut 6-3. Rutgers on the scoreboard first in the first quarter with the Tommy Angstad field goal. Then Angstad hit another field goal to give Rutgers a 6-0 lead. And then Domingos Carlos comes back and puts the Huskies on the board. No scoring so far in this third period. Wide to the left, Brian McGillicuddy. Wide to the right, John Fodor. Quarterback is Larry Korn. And on first down, he gets straight up the middle to Mike Harkins. Harkins and Dorsey, the only three-year letter winners on this Connecticut football team. Harkins was a starter at cornerback as a freshman. And he was moved to a running back the last couple of seasons. Last year, 513 yards rushing. The year before, 492. So far today, has not been able to muster anything on the ground. 
There's Mike Harkins, three for nine. He has been relatively quiet. Corn back to throw on second down. The pocket quickly evaporates, and the tackle is made by Jeff Cordilla. Well, if you're going to catch a quarterback like Corn who can move fairly well, you've got to have more than one or two men putting pressure on the quarterback. Rutgers got a good rush, and of course, everybody again pursuing the ball carry, in this case, the quarterback. You know, we talked about uh, Harkins changing positions. I think that one of the reasons that so many young college players change position is because they're maturing and their bodies are changing. They're Nate and Billy Parks. Not nearly enough for a first down. Finishing the tackle was Mercer Hedgeman on the play, and Connecticut will have to punt. What I meant by that is it's not only a matter of gaining experience, it's a matter of gaining maturity, filling out. Perhaps some of them are still growing and certainly putting on weight. You can. Uh, bet that Mike Harkins, the fullback, when he played cornerback, was not uh, quite six feet two inches and 205 pounds. He was probably 20 pounds lighter as a cornerback. Even Bobby Dumont of Rutgers, who as a season player, blew up 20 pounds during the offseason. Block punt! Rutgers with the ball at the 19-yard line of Connecticut. Out of nowhere came John Cummins. And Cummins stormed in and blocked the punt of Neil Gauvin. So Rutgers gets a now, big break. They're not supposed break. to get there from the outside, but I said earlier in the game, it looked like Bill Houston coming from the other side. You see number 15 picking up the football or trying to pick it up, had a chance to block the punt. Connecticut is not getting it off fast enough. Rutgers driving at the 19, and the score, Rutgers 6, Connecticut 3. At Manufacturers Hanover, we make the facts work for you. That's why you're coming to us for the facts on savings, facts on credit needs. You're also calling our special fact phones, using our fact coupons and fact sheets, attending our free fact seminars. You're even getting the facts and cash from our MHT 24-hour banking centers. So keep coming to Manufacturers Hanover Trust, where our facts make your money worth more. Look where the facts got us. A lesson in pitching from the pumps by Vitalis. The curve, the palm ball, the fastball, the screwball, the sinker, the submarine, the knuckler, the fork ball, the spitter, the slider, the knockdown. The pump by Vitalis, America's leading men's pump, gives your hair the control you want and a terrific natural look. He's got every pitch in the book. I'm under control. Rutgers with the ball inside, handoff goes to Vernon Williams, and he gets to the eight-yard line. So Rutgers capitalizing on the block punt, and the Scarlet Knights close to a first down. Well, that is by far their most effective running play of the game. At the end of the first half, they may have had a few more yards on a draw play, but that quick opener, certainly the most effective that the Rutgers offense has run with the ball today. That was Lenny Belez and not Vernon Williams, my mistake. <laughs> Rutgers now with a first and goal at the eight. Baker to the right, Pendergrass to the left. The Prairie on a long count. Hands the ball off to Albert Smith, and Albert gets down to the five-yard line. Fine Rutgers track. has knocked on the door before, but they have yet to come up with a six-pointer in this ball game. This is uh, where coaches universally tell their football teams when the going gets tough, the tough get going. This is where you've got to buckle your chin strap and get that yard or two. Fine trap block on that last play by Clement Udovich on uh, Mark Michaels, the son of uh, Walt Michaels, who we mentioned before. Second down and goal at the five. Full house backfield. Albert Smith, Dwayne Hooper in there, along with Lenny Beleza. Handoff goes to Hooper. Hooper to the right side. Gets down to the two. Lou Donato came up to make the tackle. Play looked like it was designed to go between the offensive guard and tackle on that right side between Owens and Brenner. Uh, Hooper elected to take it to the outside. He might have been better off following his blockers. Third down and goal at the three. Eight minutes, 35 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Rutgers lead 6-3, knocking on the door. Full house backfield, Williams, Hooper, and Smith. 
The Prairie rolls out, throws, and it is caught for a touchdown. A tremendous effort in the end zone by number 87, Scott Drake, and Drake pulls it in you for the score. So often, two defensive players in the area now. The Prairie on the rollout. You saw Michaels coming up to cover him. Every, well, he just out muscles everybody for the football. He just goes up and he uses that height to good advantage, gets up higher than the uh, defensive players Scott Drake does and pulls in the football. Might have been a little pushing there. Yes, he, I, you he know, just tossed the Nato aside. He was, uh, the official couldn't see the, the push. He was on the other side. Extra point. Tommy Angstad hits it. And Rutgers now leads 13 to 3. A great individual play by Scott Drake, out muscling Lou Donato, and the Scarlet Knights have their first touchdown. 13 3 Rutgers, 8.22 to go in the third quarter of play. If you'd like to find a better way to fly on business, TWA has news for you. On most airlines, you don't have the comfort of a special business section. But on every TWA widebody, you'll find wider seats and fewer of them in a separate business class. It's TWA's ambassador class, and it's roomy and comfortable. Even if you're next to someone as big as I am, you are. Do you know me? In international circles, my books are widely known, but my face remains a mystery. That's why I carry the American Express card. It's great for weekend getaways and terribly handy if I must reveal my born identity. To apply for the card, look for this application display and take one. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Rutgers leading Connecticut 13 to 3, 822 left third quarter. Bruce Beck and Sam DeLuca from Rutgers Stadium in Piscataway, New Jersey. And that time Sam Rutgers did capitalize on the block punt by John Cummins. That's what good football teams or winning football teams do. Scott Drake, not very big, 6'1, 215 pounds, but he got up high enough to catch that football and as we said, you know, used his muscle, used his body out for the defenders for the ball. Hankstead. Hits this one very short. And in his handle at the 21-yard line was a fair catch what? called <laughs> on a kickoff. That? that is a rarity. <laughs> Perhaps he, he put his hand up without realizing it. Yeah, but uh, why didn't they tackle him? Evidently, the official blew the whistle. And the Rutgers players, being gentlemen that they are, heated the whistle. But well, perhaps he put the hand up, and I believe a fair catch can be called on a kickoff as well as a punt. You can? No, you can't. We'll have to check that one out I soon. I don't think so. I've never seen it. Here's the scoring drive. Five plays, 19 yards. Drake catching the ball from Jack LaPurry. All set up by John Cummins, the senior from Roselle, New Jersey, who blocked the punt. Larry Korn back to throw on first down, out of the pocket, throws complete, but excellent coverage by Joe Corbin and Jimmy Dumont as they both converted uh, number 25, Brian McGillicott. Well, Rutgers seems to be a little bit more enthused. The players seems to be, seem to be a little more involved here in the second half. Evidently, the coaches had some choice words for them at halftime. I would imagine that they said, look, the game plan is fine. We're just not sticking to the game plan. We're not executing. Let's get out there and block and tackle, and that's all we'll worry about. Second and seven, Korn swings it out to Billy Parks. Parks across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Should have enough for the first down as Carl Howard and Matt Bachman ran the receiver out of bounds. And that's pretty much what Frank Burns had uh, said to us during the week when we talked about the new offense or some of the new patterns and new passing plays. And he said pretty much that uh, he wasn't overly uh, excited about the new patterns, that they're relatively unimportant. Execution is the key. Blocking, tackling, running the proper routes, timing between the quarterback and the receivers, and of course a good pass by the quarterback. Twins to the left side of the field, first and 10, UConn from the 32. Gary Dubois is carrying the football, gets to the 35. And he is gang tackled as Bachman, Cordilla, and Jim Dumont led the charge. 
course, Frank Burns also indicated to us that he thought the key to the effectiveness of his passing game this year would be the pass protection. He was somewhat concerned about his offensive tackles, both being new and relatively inexperienced. And he felt that over the course of the season, the amount of pass protection that the Prairie and Huckberg received would be the telling tale. Second and eight. Thorne pitches back to Dubose. Dubose looking to turn the corner. Gets to the 40. Bob Dumont ran him out of bounds. And it will bring up a third and short. Next week, Rutgers meets Boston College. After that, they venture north, upstate New York, to meet Syracuse. Then it's Penn State and Giant Stadium. Then it's at Army, Colgate and William & Mary. Colgate at home, William & Mary on the road, then Tennessee and Giant Stadium, Cincinnati on the road, West Virginia on the road, Temple at home. It is a challenging schedule, to say the least, and we'll be there to cover all of those Rutgers football games for you this year exclusively on Madison Square Garden Cablevision. Third and three. Corn sprints to his left. Fires complete to Mike Walsh for a first down. I'm impressed with the play of the tight end, sophomore Mike Walsh from Voluntown, Connecticut. And Walsh was the man that went into motion uh, for Connecticut. You'll see, he, there he is, number 81, Mike Walsh, along the line of scrimmage. Now you see the quarterback rambling out, once again, looking for Walsh, who had broken toward the sideline and right on target. So Connecticut looking to mount the drive at the 45-yard line, 6.52 left third quarter of play. First and 10 Huskies. Straight up the middle. Mike Harkins gets two. Neither team has been able to advance the football on the ground today. And of course, we saw the motion last time. We know that Rutgers runs a multiple formation, uh, different offensive alignments. A number of reasons for that. It forces the defense into standard alignments, which prevents them from cheating or from dictating to the offense. And also, it enables uh, the offense to use people advantageously as uh, Connecticut did on that play with Walsh going into motion, getting him in the right position. Straight up the middle goes Harkins again. Harkins to midfield, and that is all. I talked to Tom Jackson, new head coach at Connecticut during the week, who played his collegiate football for Joe Paterno and Penn State. I said, what do you really expect this year? Do you think that you can really mold this football team and improve from the 5-6 and six record, uh, record of a year ago? And the first thing he said, Sam, is I'll let you know in December. Because it's <laughs> so he? difficult at this time of year to assess things and put it in perspective. Is Tom Jackson another one of those Penn State linebackers we see all over the NFL? I don't think so. Here's Korn rolling out. Korn keeps the football, puts his head down, and has a first down. Andre Cox chased him out of bounds. Cox in replacing Jim Dumont. Bob Dumont also pursued the play. I think both coaches are sending in a lot of fresh troops because of the heat today and giving other players a chance to rest. There's no doubt that the heat is taking its toll. I don't think that the Korn ever intended to throw that football. He saw an opening develop almost immediately as he began to roll to his right, and he was determined to run with it. Uh, Connecticut now has more rushing yardage than Rutgers. 87 yards for Connecticut, 80 on the ground for Rutgers. Sam Tom Jackson was an offensive guard, by the way. Straight up the middle, Mike Harkins gets maybe a yard or two. I know you, I know you like him better now that you know he played on the line where, where the real work is done. Mm -hmm. He one of those undersized offensive guards. You know, during the week, Frank Burns was talking about uh, Clement Yudovich, and he used the word smallish for Yudovich, who stands at 6'2", 225 pounds. And gosh, when I was in college, that would have been a big offensive lineman. He would have been an offensive tackle and a defensive tackle at that size. He just saw the Rutgers defensive signals going into their team. Second down and eight to go. For the Huskies at the 38-yard line, Billy Parks in trouble. Breaks away from a couple of players. He's caught from behind, though, by George Piquel, who came on today to replace Craig Hoffner, the starting nose guard, who left with torn ligaments. At least that was the report. Torn ligaments to Hoffner's right knee. And Piquel came from behind and made the yeah, block. Watch number 81 again going in motion. Let's see if we can pick up the block. He has a clean. There is his block on uh, Bob Dumont, the key block on the play. Once again by the tight end Walsh going in motion, this time to his right. Okay, Sam, we have a third and five. Connecticut looking to keep this drive going. The ball is at the Rutgers 37. 
This has been the most impressive march of the day for the Huskies with 4.09 remaining in the third quarter of play. Corn is straight back to throw, fires, and it is complete. Caught by Brian McGillicuddy. I don't know what to call Howard was doing on the play. McGillicuddy had inside position on him, and you'll see Howard come up. Now, either you go for the football or you rack up the receiver. I don't know. Well, he just, uh, once again, had poor position, Howard did. He did not have an opportunity to deflect that football, and should, he should have timed his hit. Just as McKillicuddy touched the football, that's when Howard should have hit him in the small of the back and hopefully force a uh, cough up or a fumble. 20-yard line, first and 10 for the Huskies. Corn long count in motion, John Foder. Larry Corn hands to Billy Parks. Parks at the 15, Parks down to the 10-yard line. Billy Parks tripped up by the Rutgers secondary, Carl Howard and Billy Houston. Uh, this is a, a delayed play, a draw play. Offensive linemen setting up, turning those people. Look at the big hole. Somebody did have a shot at Billy Parks, but not a clean shot. Good blocking by the on the part of that offensive line. I think they caught the Rutgers napping on that one. Parks, a 5'9 sophomore from Bristol Central High School in Bristol, Connecticut. Last year, only carried the ball five times for 21 yards. He was slowed by an ankle injury. But in the spring game, he rushed for 120 yards and let people know let people know that he had a ride. Here's Parks again. He has a first down. And now the Connecticut Huskies must score because the football is inside the 10 at the 7. Billy Beschner made the tackle for Rutgers. Connecticut has come back from the Rutgers touchdown and really pushed the ball down Rutgers' throats. Yeah, I imagine what transpired in the Connecticut locker room was, hey, we can run the football on these guys. Let's keep it on the ground and let's move it. And they have uh, done so successfully on this drive. First and goal at the seven. Rutgers leading 13 to three, 228 third quarter. Straight up the middle, Harkins, and he's down to the one. His knee touched the surface at the one yard line. No one was near Mike Harkins or else he would have gone in for the touchdown if he had not lost his balance. Once again, right up the middle and the offensive center for Connecticut doing a job on the nose guard for Rutgers. Uh, the inside linebacker, I believe it was Jim Dumont, got caught behind, and actually the offensive center wound up blocking two people. Is that George Piquel? Well, uh, Mike Pallotta is uh, doing a good job on George Piquel at nose guard for the injured Craig Hoffman. At the one-yard line, Harkins gets the call, and Harkins stopped shy of the goal line. Huskies are getting excellent play from their left guard, Tony D'Agostino, who is a junior from nearby Belleville, New Jersey. He started two games last year as an offensive tackle. This year he was moved to guard in the spring game. The ball rests inside the one. A minute 22, third quarter. Connecticut with third and goal. Parks stopped short. Second effort, not enough. It will bring up fourth down and goal. I didn't see his number, but it looked like a Jim Dumont hit. Let's see if it is indeed Jim Dumont, number 53. No, it wasn't. Is that Bob Dumont or Billy Houston? Bill Houston. I saw a five hit. there somewhere. He anticipated the running back going over the top. This is the only way you're going to stop him. The defensive line piles it up. Those linebackers and secondary people, uh, safeties, come up and catch him as he attempts to go over the top. Nice Here comes play. Jim Dumont now over to talk to Coach Frank Burns and his staff. The ball is still inside the one. It is fourth down and in inches for a touchdown. Credit the last play to Joe Corbin, Billy Houston, and Bob Dumont. Again, this is a situation where you might expect Connecticut to utilize the running ability, uh, the speed of their quarterback, Larry Korn, who is one of the fastest players on the Connecticut team, just about the fastest. You take him on a bootleg or a rollout, and of course it puts pressure on the defense and try to utilize his, his ability to run. When you can do that with a quarterback, it gives you an extra man on your offensive unit. When the quarterback is compelled to hand off, it obviously eliminates him from the action, so you're going with one less man. In that case, it's 10 against 11. When the quarterback carries, it's 11 against 11. Well, we have come to one of those plays in a football game 
which you can honestly call crucial. Yes, that's an appropriate choice of words. This is a key play. The play for Connecticut. Fourth and less than a yard. Connecticut at the Rutgers one foot line. And I don't believe he made it. Rutgers has held at the goal line. Jim Dumont made the key play. And the Scarlet Knights will take over from their own one foot line. Rutgers leads in the football game 13 to 3 from Rutgers Stadium in Piscataway, New Jersey. You're watching Rutgers football on Madison Square Garden Cable Vision. The action is here as Madison Square Garden Cablevision presents the very best in sports and entertainment programming. There's the exclusive coverage of all Knicks and Rangers home games. That's more than 80 evenings to see your favorite professional teams live from the Garden. Boxing fans get a full schedule of today's pros, plus tomorrow's champs in the Golden Gloves. MSG Cablevision viewers catch the nonstop action with wrestling, as well as college basketball and football, while horse racing fans get action seven nights a week. Watch for the best men and women tennis stars in the world. And don't forget basketball's most historic championship, the National Invitation Tournament. There are also special events like the horse show, the dog show, and the renowned Milrose Games in track and field. And now the network that brings legends to living rooms presents diversified entertainment with the Avengers, Andy Warhol's TV, and the Jonathan Schwartz Show. All on Madison Square Garden Cablevision, the network for sports and entertainment all year round. Rutgers holds Connecticut. They begin from their own one-foot line. First and ten, LaPrairie straight up the middle, trying to give himself a little bit more room to work and gets a yard on the play. Tough situation for LaPrairie or any quarterback or the it's entire it's offensive it's unit. What can you call in that situation? Yeah, you don't want to run laterally. You don't want to risk uh, a handoff or risk a loss of any kind. Safest play is to have the quarterback keep it. That last defensive series, Sam, the kind of plays of which winning football teams are made. Rutgers holding at their own goal line. Let's see if they can get it out of there. Loose football on the exchange. And if Connecticut has it, it's a touchdown. It's a safety. Rutgers recovered the football. And it's a safety. That'll be two for the Huskies. We'll wait for the pile to unfold. Rutgers has it. It's a safety. Connecticut easily could have gotten a touchdown. It is a safety. Let's watch it again. Does he ever have the football? Nope. He never got the snap from center. And I believe it was the Prairie that fell onto the football. But in his end zone. So it is now Rutgers 13, Connecticut 5. And the Huskies, who could not get in for the six points, settle for two on the safety and now will receive the free kick. Well, that was the one thing, of course, that Rutgers did not want to do. They did not want to uh, uh, get thrown for a loss or mishandle the snap from center or fumble in that situation and give uh, Connecticut a couple of points. Well, Sam, I still feel if you're Rutgers, you'd much rather give up the yes, two there yes. than the six. Yeah, uh, psychologically, it had to be a big lift for the defensive unit. Hopefully, some will carry over to the offensive unit for Rutgers, and uh, they'll be able to move next time they get the football. So Matt Latham drops back for Connecticut, and Rutgers will have the free kick right now. They will boot it from their own 20, and Gary Liska will punt it away. Jack LaPrairie almost lost the ball into enemy hands for a touchdown. Uh, in that situation, you're almost lucky to give away the two on that kind of a, of a miscue. Two is better than six or seven. 13-5 Rutgers, 20 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Liska punts it directly to Latham at his own 30. Latham to the 35, to the 40. Huskies will have excellent field position as this third quarter begins to wind down. Rutgers. 
Rutgers had not had an injury uh, prior to the one uh, sustained by Craig Hoffner, the nose guard, in the first quarter. They were relatively fortunate during their, their preseason or their preparation for this first game. Of course, then they didn't scrimmage a heck of a lot either. Just one full out 11 on 11 scrimmage. Billy Parks back in the ball game. Parks gets three straight up the middle. On the bottom of that pile is Bob Dumont. Butch Young came up to help on the tackle. It will be second down and seven. I think with the type of schedule that Rutgers plays, those four bowl teams and one good team after another, the one thing you don't want is injuries. Last year in many of those games that we brought broadcast Bruce against the top flight teams Rutgers did well in the first half and then they started to wear them down in the third and fourth quarters and when you look at the scoring last year uh, much of the scoring by the other team occurred in the third and fourth quarter that is the end of the third quarter of play the score Rutgers 13 Connecticut 5. At Manufacturers Hanover, we separate fact from fiction. That's why you're coming to us for the facts on retiring comfortably, facts on checking, facts on earning high interest. You're getting these facts and more from our fact machines, fact phones, fact newsletters, and customer service staff. In these confusing times, it pays to come to Manufacturers Hanover Trust, where our facts make your money worth more. Look where the facts got us. I admit it. I overdid it. I went that extra mile. For all you overdoers who push your bodies a bit too far, there's buffering. I admit it. I overdid it. I kicked like a cheerleader. Now I could kick myself. For all your minor aches and pains, there's buffering. Buffering has aspirin, the pain reliever so many sports doctors recommend. Plus, it's buffered to help protect against aspirin stomach upset. I admit it. I overdid it. I didn't win. But I won't be a sore loser. Buffering for when you overdo. Sam DeLuca back at Rutgers Stadium. Connecticut with the ball on second down and seven. And running the option to the left is Larry Korn as he gets to the 45-yard line. In eventful third quarter of play, Rutgers scoring on a touchdown pass from Jack LaPrairie to his tight end, number 87, Scott Drake, the freshman. It was all set up by a blocked punt by John Cummins. And then Connecticut marched down the field, could not get in at the one-yard line. And Rutgers trying to move the football from their own one. Jack LaPrairie fumbled the ball, got caught in the end zone for a safety. Connecticut picks up their two points with 20 seconds remaining in the quarter. And so Rutgers leads 13 to 5 and flags down all over the place on third and five. Very tough for either team to do much of a scout. Okay, fourth start on the part of the center, I believe, was the call. Talking about the scouting, I know that Frank Burns indicated that he wasn't very familiar with uh, Connecticut, especially since they had changed their offense from a wishbone last year to an I formation this year. And again, it being the first game of the season, anything that they did know about uh, Connecticut or Connecticut knowing about Rutgers had to come off films of last year. Third and ten. Yeah, both schools exchange films, as you mentioned, but it's it's not the same thing, is it? No. As Especially seeing the club year in offense. and year out. The last time these two teams met was way back in 79. In motion goes John Fodor. Korn rolls out, has some room, and quickly the room evaporates as Bob Dumont chased him out of bounds. Bob Dumont has played an outstanding football game. Well, Rutgers leads 15 to 5. However, you'd never know it by looking at the total stats to this point in the football game. Connecticut has uh, 86 yards passing, 115 yards on the ground. Rutgers just 81 yards rushing, 157 yards passing. Total yardage 238 for Rutgers, 201 for Connecticut. Neil Govin back in punt formation. Jim Shedneck back at the 20 yard line. Good punt. Shedneck at the 15 and he stays in bounds gets to the 25 eludes a couple tacklers and goes out of bounds Rutgers will start from their own 25 13 minutes 48 seconds remaining in the football game the season opener for both clubs and Rutgers owns a 13 5 lead <laughs> Sports Group with 
front wheel drive, a slippery arrow front body, a low point three four drag coefficient, and a four plus four transmission available. The only sport coupe with a liquid crystal display on the Cordia LS. By the way, I just opened a resource management account with Payne Weber. Well, I've had an account like that for years. My canceled checks are returned automatically. Merrill Lynch. As a cardholder, I'm offered a $10,000 line of credit. I wish Dean Witter had that. And the securities in my account are insured up to $10 million. But $10 million? Open a Payne Weber resource management account, and you can be saying, Thank you, Payne Weber. We're back at Rutgers Stadium. The Scarlet Knights with the ball at their own 23. And Jack LaPrairie swings one out to Dwayne Hooper. Hooper has some men in front of him. Hooper across the 30. The 35 and out of bounds with a first down. First play we've seen today where the quarterback has looked to his running back. And I thought we might see more of that, Sam. Well, this is a screen pass. Traditional screen. Quarterback drops back into the pocket, dumps it off to the running back. Hooper to the outside. You saw a couple of offensive linemen from the left side. Well, actually, it was the, uh, the two offensive guards out there in front of the ball carrier. Tough play to run when they're rushing just three defensive linemen most of uh, the time. First down at the 36. Hooper, the eye back, gets the call. Hooper, two yards. Once again, tough yardage on the ground. I think nothing would please Frank Burns more, although he mentioned the importance of the pass and how they intended to pass uh, a lot this year. Nothing would please him more than for Rutgers to be able to control that football primarily on the ground and move it up the field. Mark Michaels limps off the field. He's replaced by Mike McEachern at left end. Second down and eight. Prairie with lots of time. Throws, and it is intercepted. Picked off by Matt Latham, and Connecticut will take over inside of the 50 at the Rutgers 49-yard line. The pass intended for Andrew Baker. The ball was thrown behind Baker, and Latham was you there. You can go to any college practice field in the country and watch them work on the tip drill. Defensive backs reacting to the football while it's in the air. That was an easy one because that ball was tipped easily seven or eight feet into the air and right into the hands of the uh, defender, number 45, Matt Latham, the uh, weak safety for Connecticut. So the Huskies now with another opportunity with 12.56 left in the football game. They trail by only eight. Corn will put it up on first down. Pressure by Bukowski, and he goes down. Barry Bukowski, the 6'4 senior from Runnymede, New Jersey, played mostly as a reserve last year at linebacker. This year converted to left end. Watch Bukowski come from the outside, and nobody picks him up. It probably should have been one of the uh, setbacks. You see that he panics just a little bit, Corn, or maybe he saw Bukowski coming because he left the pocket. Nobody picked up Bukowski, and uh, he's thrown for a loss. A big loss of six, second and 16. John Fodor goes in motion. Out of the eye, Corn hands off to Parks. I don't know how Billy Parks found running room. It looked like there was no hole. And Parks made it into a fine game. Straight up the middle, Sam. Straight up the middle, and yet he didn't take off. Normally when they run that play, you know, he's just going to hit and run as quickly as he can. Watch, he sort of staggers and stutters a little bit, sort of waiting for his blocks to develop. Makes a decision. I see he was trying to uh, avoid a would-be tackler there, and he did. Good job. Good running. Good block by Mike Gasparino, who was one of the tri-captains on this Connecticut football team. Gasparino, a 6'2 senior from Riverside, Connecticut. He has started in 23 consecutive games. Third and four. Corn options. Pitches back to Parks, and he's run out of bounds. Dan Errico is there. Andre Cox, good pressure by the Rutgers defensive crew as Mercer Hedgeman also chipped in on that tackle. Watch Bob Dumont. He's the key, number 35. Watch how he forces Corn to pitch the football and yet doesn't commit him. There he is, number 35, and still 
forces Korn to pitch and then gets in on the tackle. Can't ask for a defensive end to do much more than that. He did it all. Number 35, a senior, Bob Dumont, identical twin of Jim Dumont, Levittown, Pennsylvania, solid football player. Neil Govin back in punt formation for the Huskies. And the punt is blocked again by John Cummins. Rutgers recovers near midfield, and John Cummins has his second punt of the afternoon. And what a surprise he has been today. I believe that it's just a poor snap and a slow kick because the people from the outside coming from where they originated are not supposed to be able to get in that quickly if the timing is correct. If he gets the, the punt off in the prescribed length of time, I believe it's about, uh, oh, about 2.5 seconds, I think, for the entire thing. From the snap 2.5 to 2.8, they're not doing that. I don't have a stopwatch, but uh, obviously that's the problem. Cummins, a 5'10 senior, Roselle, New Jersey, was a quarterback in high school. He's a reserve defensive back here at Rutgers and also a solid special teams man. And that was pretty much the line on Cummins coming into today's game. And he certainly has answered those calls because he has played extremely well, has blocked two punts. One led to a touchdown pass from the Prairie to Scott Drake. Once again, Rutgers stuck cold on their first down running attempt. The only yardage or good yardage they've had on first down has been where they've gone to the air. They just have not been able to uh, establish and certainly not sustain any kind of a running tack today. Second and eight, Rutgers, 10-42 left in the football game. Rutgers leads 13-5. La Prairie going for all the marbles to Baker, and it's overthrown. Shane Porter back in isolated coverage and I'll tell you Andrew Baker is a difficult man to play one on one. Shane Porter did a good job not a big guy 5'9 167 but he certainly was with Baker step for step all the way down the field. Here's a look at the play selection and Rutgers has really put the ball in the air today. We had thought that Rutgers would throw the ball, but 30 times or more. I think that's what he's striving for. You know, a balance between the run and the pass, but they haven't been able to do anything on the ground and not much more in the air. Third and eight. The Prairie with time. He throws complete to Pendergrass. Boris has a first down at the 35. John Dorsey made the tackle. Boris Pendergrass, a junior from the Bronx, played behind Eric Johnson last year. Yeah, Frank Burns has been pleased with his speed. Uh, again, you can't utilize speed against that type of zone coverage. You've got to hook up into those dead spots between the linebackers dropping back and the deep secondary, and certainly the cornerbacks have been laying off for Connecticut. They're playing uh, exceptionally deep. First down, Rutgers at the 35. Single setback, Vernon Williams. Two tight ends, Andrews and Drake. The handoff to Williams with a big hole at the 25 to the 21-yard line. Okay. Vernon Williams with a quick acceleration move, and Matt Latham right. made the stop. Watch the blitz. Both inside linebackers coming on this play. Blitz is a hit-or-miss situation. It's a gamble. When you blitz, there's number 56 coming. Dorsey was on the other side. When you don't plug the gaps, when you don't hit the holes properly, Properly, that's when the offense can break the big one, and that's precisely what happened. 14-yard pickup, first down at the 21-yard line. Rutgers mixing things up well in this drive. Single setback is Williams. Hand off to Williams, straight up the middle, three yards behind Owens to Gilio and Yudovich. Vernon Hargraves in on the tackle. Yeah, maybe it's four yards, but better than no yards as they got on that last first down play. And of course, if Rutgers can establish some kind of a running attack, it's going to take a lot of pressure off La Prairie and the passing game. La Prairie stats, not bad, 17 for 30. One touchdown, 177 yards, but he has thrown two interceptions. And of course, the interceptions frequently the key. Second down and six. Single setback, two tight ends. It's Vernon Williams again. He gets to the outside. Vernon Williams down to the 12-yard line. Vernon Hargreaves made the tackle. Fine tackle. Boy, a great play by Hargreaves. Uh, the, is it Hargreaves? Hargreaves, but I was going to say, Sam, that he has been on almost every uh -huh. tackle. Coming into today, they said he averaged 12 tackles per game. He was honorable mention All-New England last year, honorable mention All-American. 
and he had 10 pass deflections last year, was second on the team in tackles with 102. And when he's not in on the tackles, John Dorsey is. Dorsey averages 15 per game. He must have at least 15 today. And Dorsey was the player of the year last year for the defensive core in the Yankee Conference. Full house backfield now for Rutgers on third and short. Williams has the first down, but flags are down all over the place. Well, you put those two totals together. The average for Dorsey, 14.9 tackles a game. Let's hear the call. They got dead ball. Full start. Offense. Okay. Uh, and you take uh, Vernon Hargrave's average of 11.9 tackles per game. Together you have 27 tackles just about per game. How many times does the opposing team run the football? They're Maybe in. 25. Yeah, they're in on about, uh, I would say, 60 to 70% of the tackles. It'll be third down now and about five on the false start. Ball comes back to the 16 and now instead of the full house backfield looking for short yardage, you're looking for perhaps a pass or perhaps an option. That's a good, good guess. Good call. The Prairie will throw. Has time. Throws behind Scott Drake incomplete. He had him. He was wide open, and he just threw that one behind his receiver. Yes, he did, and Scott Drake had the first down. Again, they were dropping back deep, as the linebackers have been dropping back all day. Drake was underneath. Poor pass by the Prairie. Field goal time. Ball spot at the 16. It will be put down at the 23, so with 10 of the end zone, it will be a 33-yard attempt by Tom Angstad, who is two for two today, hit a 30-yard field goal in the first quarter and a 22-yard field goal in the second quarter. 33-yard attempt, Keith Hudak will hold. Ball placed down and the kick is up. He's got the distance, it's good. Tom Angstad has hit three for three today in the field goal department. Rutgers increases their lead to 16-5. 7.44 left in the football game. Scarlet Knights by 11. Do you know how many of these motor oils would love to make this claim? an American Express card. And that makes me the king of the room. To apply for the card, look for an application and take one. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Back at Rutgers Stadium, Bruce Beck and Sam DeLuca and the Scarlet Knights have opened up an 11-point lead and they must be very pleased with the find in Tom Angstadt. Yes, I think that Frank Burns may be somewhat surprised because he had indicated during the week that none of his three field goal uh, kickers uh, had really uh, stood out. When we saw uh, Coach Burns, Sam, during the week at the weekly Metropolitan Area College Football Writers Luncheon, we said to him, how about your kicking game? He says, do you know anybody? <laughs> and today he certainly found one. Ball is fumbled at the nine-yard line, picked up by Jerry McIntosh, and he is buried inside his own 10-yard line. Tackle made by Mercer Hedgeman. Well, he makes a mistake now. He should have taken the football and run right up the sideline after fumbling it. You don't want to start to go to your right now and have all those people give them all a chance to converge on you. Had he gone straight up the left side, he might have gotten four or five yards. Rutgers with an impressive march the last time down the field. The scoring drive, 10 plays, 51 yards, and Angstet, three for three on the day, kicks a 33-yard field goal. Corn in big trouble inside his own 10, goes straight up the middle on first down, and 
gets maybe two yards. David Scott carried the football. There's number 11. Real surprise, Tommy Angstead, who became the number one kicker when Pete Conzillo broke his leg in the spring. Angstead took over the chores of number one. Last year, he was a backup to Alex Falcinelli. A matter of fact, the only time he played last year, he kicked off one time against Army. That's not a lot of experience coming back. Second down and eight yards to go for the Connecticut Huskies. John Fodor goes in motion. go. Barry Bukowski in on the stop. George Bakel was there also. And it will bring up a third down and long. Rutgers defensive group since midway in the third quarter has played well. Yes, the, uh, the defense, you really can't uh, find too much to criticize about the defense. The offense has moved the ball well at times, but repeatedly has faulted inside that 20-yard line. Next week, Rutgers and Boston College from Giants Stadium. Rematch of the game a year ago where Boston College pulled it out in the waning seconds. Corn rolls out, in trouble, throws, and it's picked off by Butch Young, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! What a play by Butch Young. Strong safety came up, picked up the ball, and went into pay dirt, and the Scarlet Knights have Increase their lead. Fine play by Young. He saw an opportunity to get the football. The quarterback, Corn, under pressure. Watch the fine pursuit by Mercer Hedgeman now, who turns on some speed. He's got some speed. There he's coming on the play, and he runs down Corn, puts pressure on him, and you see that uh, it just goes right to Young. Corn almost made the tackle. Jimmy Dumont hit Young, spun him around in the right direction, and Young went in for the score. So Butch can thank Jim Dumont for help in that touchdown return. Angstead on for the point after. Suddenly, Rutgers has opened up a nice lead in this football game. The kick is blocked by Dorsey. John Dorsey came busting through and blocked Angstead's extra point. But Rutgers has six more points. They now have a comfortable lead, 22 to five, with 6.09 remaining in the football game. If you're ready for high-performance photography, the Minolta X700 program system is ready for you. Computerized, motorized, systematized, total capability, from fully programmed where you said nothing, even with flash, to creative manual where you control everything. The high-performance Minolta X700, voted camera of the year on two continents, only from the mind. Wide bodies start out roomy. Then, on most airlines, that space fills up. But on TWA, it's different. TWA has a separate business class that's spacious and comfortable. And it's on every wide body flight. TWA's ambassador class has bigger, wider seats and fewer of them, with room for longer legs and wider bodies. Couldn't have said it better myself. Rutgers 22, Connecticut 5, Harold Butch Young intercepting a pass and going 18 yards for the Scarlet score at 6.09 of the fourth quarter of play. And there's Young. You know, he was an all-stater at Rawway High School as a running back. In his senior year, had 1,500 yards rushing and scored 149 points. Whenever he has a chance, since he plays defense, to touch the ball, he loves to run with it, and you can certainly see why. Dubose carries the ball from his own end zone across the 20 to the 22-yard line. It will be first and 10 for the Connecticut Huskies. Sam, do you remember last year when Young intercepted a pass and he was running back and forth all across the field? He just loves to have a chance to advance the football when he has the possibility. Most defensive backs are like that. You know, they'll tell offensive backs, or the good offensive back runs every play as if it was his last run, the last time he was going to get a handoff. And most offensive backs don't do that. But when a defensive back has the opportunity to run that's frequently the way they run and probably why they're so effective. 
Here's the average on first downs, and both teams have done extremely well so far in this football game. Those statistics are mind-boggling. Horn straight up the middle, and Parks gets maybe a yard. I'll tell you, in the last three or four possessions, Connecticut is not getting good yardage on first down. Well, much of, well, let's uh, look at this uh, replay first. The handoff, the lead back, he doesn't follow his back. He breaks to the right or tries to be break to the right, runs into a crowd. Had he followed his lead blocker, the other uh, back blocking for him, he probably would have had two or three yards at least. Poor choice. Second down, 10. Corn, the junior from New Rochelle, has been in there all the way. Back to throw, and it's incomplete. Overshot Mike Walsh. Once again, the Rutgers defense on the field. They've played uh, most of the time in this second half. Let's see what happens here. Sheds one blocker. Good effort. Good fine job by uh, number 94 for Rutgers, Randy Hennis. Third down and 10. Connecticut 40% efficiency so far in the ball game. Rutgers 50% efficiency. This is a long one, third and 10. Gary Dubose in the ball game as the tailback. Mike Harkins the fullback. Larry Korn the quarterback sends twins to the right side of the field. Draw play, Dubose, and he will not get enough. Well, certainly the defense for Rutgers has been the better part of their play today. Or the defense has played exceedingly well. The defense, in many cases, has been the Rutgers offense today. They got their first score, a field goal after they recovered a fumble punt, and then a touchdown pass to Drake after a block punt. Rutgers then held Connecticut at that one-yard line, and then, of course, the run back for a touchdown by Butch Young on that interception. Back in punt formation, Neil Gauvin at his own 15. Jim Shedneck. Watches it bounce at the 40, will not touch the ball, and Rutgers will take over at their own 36 with excellent field position, a comfortable 17-point lead, and 4.35 to go. Well, Madison Square Garden Cablevision will bring you all 11 Rutgers University football games this fall. Next week, Rutgers goes to Giant Stadium to play the Eagles of Boston College and All-American quarterback Doug Flutie. Don't forget, Madison Square Garden Cablevision will bring you all the action beginning at 10.30 p.m. on Saturday night and Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Rutgers and Boston College, a rematch of the game a year ago. First and 10, Eric Hochberg, new quarterback in the ball game for Rutgers. He hands off to Lenny Beleza, the sophomore fullback. Beleza gets a couple off the right side. Well, Frank Burns said that we were going to see Eric Hochberg in the ball game, so this does not necessarily mean that uh, either he nor Dick Curl were dissatisfied with the Jack LaPrairie's performance. No, I think LaPrairie played extremely well for game number one. Without a running attack, he did pretty good. Hochberg, a sophomore from State College, Pennsylvania. Second down and seven, loses the snap. And Rutgers recovers. I spoke to Joe DiGilio, the starting center, during the week, and I asked him about the differences of snapping the ball to a lefty quarterback and then a righty quarterback. And he says, you know, it doesn't really bother me much. The only thing is with LaPrairie, being a lefty, I have to roll the ball a little bit more, and sometimes I'm a little bit slower off the football. But otherwise, he says he doesn't mind it. Well, certainly Eric Cockberg has a chance to show what he can do in this situation. Cockberg threw over 50% completion percentage last year, has an excellent arm. He's a righty, LaPrairie, of course, the lefty. Cockberg steps up, throws, and it's incomplete, intended for Scott Drake. And Drake should have held on to the football. In fact, there were a couple of passes and attempting to evaluate Jack LaPrairie that they dropped on him uh, in the first half. Probably if you put those into his stats, his stats would be rather impressive. Gary Liska comes on for Rutgers. The punting and kicking game were very suspect coming into today's action, but <clears throat> certainly the kicking game has been strong. The punting game has been fair. Liska back at his 22. 320 left in the football game. Rutgers leading 22 to 5. Liska sails a beauty. Good hang time. Fair catch called for by Latham at his own 27 yard line. And that's where the Huskies will start out first and 10. Sam, let's look ahead for a moment to 
some of the big Rutgers contests this year. We have to be honest in assessing Rutgers' performance today, knowing that they're playing a school, uh, Division One AA, not Division One A. Next week, first of all, there's Boston College, and that should be a test immediately. Doug Flutie, remember how impressive he was last year as a sophomore, and of course, Boston College went to the Tangerine Bowl last year. And of course, you have Penn State and West Virginia down the way. Penn State, Sugar Bowl, and they're always tough. Straight up the middle, Mike Harkins. Three or four yards. It's fair to say that Rutgers has to win games like this if they're going to finish yeah. up above 500, though. You, you must. You must beat the teams you're supposed to beat. Fortunate for Rutgers that they didn't have to uh, take on Penn State this week after that shellacking they took from Nebraska. I wouldn't want to uh, have to face Joe Paterno. <laughs> I felt that in the second half, Rutgers came out with more intensity, though, and played better football. Yes, they did. Overall, you know, the performance is not bad. And you, you can't underestimate Connecticut because they are a Division II school. They do have an experienced uh, veteran defense, 11 returning starters, and uh, they were tough. Those two inside linebackers are good football players. That's the key to their attack. They utilize them uh, properly also. In other words, they have confidence in them where they don't have to play them tight. They don't rush them against the pass. They drop them back, and yet you still can't run against them because they're just bruisers. Connecticut is also still adjusting to the I formation. For years, they ran the wishbone. This year, they scrapped the wishbone in favor of split backs in the eye. And that's going to take a little bit of time. Plus, you've got a new quarterback, Larry Korn, who took over for Rob Travella, who had started last year, but missed all of spring with mononucleosis. This is Korn rolling out. Fires incomplete, intended for Kane Wynn, a 5'9 junior from Stamford, Connecticut. So both teams making wholesale changes now with just two minutes and 29 seconds to play in this football game. As you can see, Rutgers came to play in the second half. A lethargic 6-3 lead at halftime, but 16 points in the second half. And the only two they've allowed here in the second half a safety as Jack LaFerry was tackled in his own end zone. Neil Gauvin boots a beauty. Shedendek back to his 21. Shedendek breaks a couple of tackles. He's to the 25 or maybe the 25 and he goes down. Couldn't get to the outside. Brought to the ground by number 31, Mike McNamara. He almost got to the outside and he got good, pretty good yardage on the play. Well, sometimes in a football game, this late in the game, when one team leads handily, you tend to overlook what happens with the reserves. But if I were a football player, Sam, in the first game of the year, and I had a chance to play right now, I'd certainly want to impress because I've got the whole season in front of me. Oh, we may overlook what's happening, but the reserves are not overlooking it. They're giving it 100% effort. This is their chance, their big chance. Eric Cockberg, the quarterback right now, pitches to Albert Smith. Smith turns the corner, breaks a couple tackles. Smith may go. He's at the 40, reverses field. He's at midfield, the Connecticut 40. Albert Smith to the Connecticut 33-yard line before Gary Lanzafama and Matt Latham made the tackle. See some good moves now. The quick pitch out. Looking to the outside, moving laterally. This is what a good ball carrier will do without slowing down. He just picked his hole, constantly looking at those defensive players. Now cuts, as they say, clear across the grain. And this big guy does a pretty good job of running him down from behind. What, uh, what's his number, 96? Gary Lanzafama, a young man yeah. from North Edison, New Jersey, went to J.P. Stevens High School. Rutgers getting another reserve running back in the game, Brian Anthony. Well, that uh, last run by Albert Smith is going to make the running stats look a lot better for Rutgers, but uh, really doesn't change much. When they had to pick up the key yardage on the ground, they were not able to do it today. Darrell Prittingham in the ball game as a wide receiver now for Rutgers. Gary Bedell at the other wide receiver spot. Eric Hockberg, the quarterback. Let's see if he puts one up. Nope, keeps the ball on the ground. Straight up the middle and Len Beleza, the sophomore from East Brunswick High School in North Brunswick, New Jersey, gets a couple. 
Well, you, would, you wouldn't expect him to, uh, to throw the football with just 57 seconds remaining on the clock. Rutgers sitting on a very comfortable 22 to 5 lead. It would almost be rubbing it in. And then again, you want to get the game over with without injuries. And by running the football, you're going to eat up the clock and pass time faster. Third down and seven for Rutgers at the Connecticut 30. Rutgers leads 22 to 5 with 35 seconds left in the football game. Rutgers, no doubt, will have their first win of 1983. Here's Brian Anthony, and Anthony breaks a couple tackles, breaks away. He's at the 10-yard line and down to the nine. Jerry McIntosh made a saving tackle at the nine-yard line. Brian Anthony, a sophomore from Dwight Morrow High School this in Anglewood, why New Jersey. You see coaches constantly substituting uh, on teams that have great depth, where the players are rather constant. You saw him break one tackle, two. He's fresh. Everyone else is tired. And it certainly shows a fine run by Brian Anthony. Put his head down, picked up the yardage, made the right cut. Showed some good speed and quickness. Not, not much more you can ask of any offensive back or any running back. The announcers on this telecast were selected by Madison Square Garden. And that's the ball game. Scarlet Knights of Rutgers have opened up 1983 with a win. The final score, Rutgers 22, Connecticut 5. We'll take a break. We'll come back and wrap it up from Rutgers Stadium in just a moment. Rutgers Sports Review with Pat Delsey. Brought to you by the Red Circle Bank, New Jersey National Bank. Hello, sports fans, and welcome once again to the Rutgers Sports Review. We're with you every week with a program of activity that's happening on the Rutgers University campus. Today, we'll be visited by Coach Frank Burns with highlights of the 22-5 Connecticut win last weekend. We'll also be visited by senior defensive back John Cummins and junior place kicker Tom Angstad. Two of the fine, outstanding ballplayers from last weekend's game will have highlights on those particular ballplayers. We'll also have film on Flutie from Boston College. All of this and more coming up on the Rutgers Sports Review. Thank you for joining us, and stay tuned. We'll be right back. Sports Review and our very special guest is Coach Frank Burns. Well, Coach, you had block punts, you had a goal line stand, yeah. great kicking, great offense, interceptions. I think you'll order 10 more of these, won't you? <laughs> I certainly will, Pat. A lot of things happen Saturday and uh, many pleasant things for the Rutgers football team. Let's take a look at some of the activity in your mind, what occurred this past week. And first of all, the offense really moved relatively well for the first game. Well, I think we move well. I was especially pleased with the offensive line as far as pass protection is concerned. LaPrairie had a lot of time to throw. We really had no breakdowns whatsoever. We, our running game, Pat, left some, some to be desired, and uh, we've got to work hard on that this week. But uh, got a couple of nice bombs to Baker. Another <clears> thing, of course, that has to be uh, a point of confidence building, and that's that goal line stand. I mean, that had to be something. Well, I, I think that was a great thing, not, not just for our defensive football team, but uh, it gave a great lift to our ent entire team. And, you know, when you can hold a team uh, three downs on a half-yard line, they actually they were on a six-inch line when they started the ball, and we held them three downs in a row. And that really picked everybody up, and not only for, for the Connecticut game, but I, I think it gave our defensive team a, a great deal of confidence in themselves. I think it has to give them the confidence that later on in the season, when you're, when you're faced with a situation that's very, very bad, you have to have the feeling that you can do it. Yeah, and Whether I think it be they, I a think goal line that. stand or just getting out of no, trouble. No, that's, that's correct. Very true. Uh, any areas in which you were displeased other than maybe a little bit of the uh, offensive move? Well, I think we were, let's put it this way, I think we were inconsistent uh, really on both sides of the football. We had a little problem on contain on the outside, on a sprint out type of pass. Uh, we let the quarterback get free now and then. And again, as I mentioned, uh, I don't think our uh, running game was that good. But again, it, it was the first football game of the season. I think these are things we can correct. Tom Angstadt uh, doing the place kicking. Yeah, he, was, he was really a, a very pleasant surprise. I had no idea or no one had any idea what Tommy would do. You know, he's never kicked under pressure and he came through with uh, three fine field goals out of three tries. And Liska on your punts? Liska did very well. Now, Liska's problem in the past has been getting uh, hang time, you know, height on the football. He, he's been pretty, pretty good with distance. Uh, now, Saturday, uh, 
Uh, they had nine yards in return. In fact, just about every one of his kicks were fair caught. And that's one of the most important things, of course, with kicking. You can get a mile, but yeah. if it goes line drive, they're going to run that's it back. That's right. Kick it 70 yards on a drive, and you're going to get hurt. But if you can get, up, get the hang time, he had, he had real good hang time, and he averaged close to 40 yards. He got an injury. Your nose guard, Craig Hoffner, is out for the season. Uh, what other injuries are there? Yeah, we're going to miss Craig. He's a very fine football player. He, he broke his leg, and, and as you say, Pat, we're going to miss him this season. Uh, we had one other injury, and that was our, our Mike Brennan, our right offensive tackle. He had a slight knee strain, and I think he'll miss about two weeks. Well, we have a lot of highlights we want to get into this week, and uh, there are many uh, offensively and defensively. So let's start and take Good a look enough. at the highlights of the Kinetic G game. Right. And this should be kind of interesting because we start with the first and 10 at the Rutgers nine yard line, a 48 yard bomb, La Prairie to Baker. Well, you know, Baker's a real tough kid to cover, and he gets a fine pass from La Prairie and makes a fine over the shoulder catch. We're going to get a chance to see that again, the end zone shot. This got us out of an early hole, Pat. You know, we were we, we had been penalized. We broke a punt return, and we got a 15-yard penalty, and it set us back uh, real close to our own goal line. We have a second and six coming up uh, from Connecticut's 39-yard line, a 16-yard pass again to Baker. All right, well, you see, LaPrey has a lot of time to throw the football, and Baker, uh, you know, he just finds that soft spot on the curl and pattern, makes a fine jumping catch. I think you see LaPrairie kind of takes his time. Last year, uh, he was a little bit inexperienced. He probably would have rushed that throw. That drive, by the way, ended with Tom Angstad kicking a 30-yard field goal, which we don't have on tape. Here's Gary Liska punting a 36-yarder. The punt is fumbled by Shane Porter and then recovered by Mercer Hedgman. Uh, he tried to run it back. Of course, it's a dead ball, but... Uh, Everybody uh, liked to get that TD. Yeah, I right? think <laughs> when you get that ball in your hands, regardless of what the situation is, you're going to run with that's, it. And he did. Correct. Here's the replay right. on it. You're not going to take any chances. Maybe the official will make a mistake, you know? The Mercer's been a great player for us on special teams, or every area of special teams. Here's the 22-yard field goal by Tom Angstad, giving Rutgers a 6-0 lead at this particular point in the second quarter. Connecticut's field goal by Domingo Carlos uh, made it 6-3, to three, and that was the score at the end of the first half. Rutgers six, Connecticut three. On a fourth and five from the Connecticut 31-yard line, Neil Govins' punt is blocked by Cummins. John Cummins, we're gonna see a replay on this. The ball is down to the 19-yard line. Billy Houston recovered. Uh, that was a great, but, uh, what we call a layout by John Cummins. He's a kid from Roselle, a walk-on football player two years ago, and really contributed greatly in a special teams area. Actually, that was the first of two. By the way, a couple of plays later on the third and two from the Connecticut two-yard line, LaPrairie passes to Scott Drake for the touchdown, and we'll see this a couple of times. There's the first replay. Right. I think LaPrairie did a nice job. Uh, you know, he was pressured on the outside stop, just laid there. the ball up. There was a little bit of a bump. I'm glad the official didn't see it, but <laughs> Scotty Drake uh, did a real fine job coming down with this football. This was anybody's football, really. But it was bumping on both sides, so I guess the, the official left his uh, flag in the pocket. Uh, here we have the point after touchdown by Tom. It's Tommy. Tommy really kicked, uh, we mentioned, exceptionally well for us. I'm very pleased with now, that. Now, here comes the goal line stand. The score is 13-3, to by the way. The goal line stand, that was a second and one from the one-yard line. Mike Hawkins, no gain. Joe Corbin made the stop on that play. And now we're going to see a third and one. Billy Parks over the top and watch the hit on this. Here's a great play by Billy Houston uh, coming in first and then Carl Howard, our left cornerback, coming in second. They, they did a tremendous job. And we're going to see a replay on that. Here comes Houston. You'll see 15 right there and then Carl Howard from the other side and Bobby Dumont kind of finishes things up. And the fourth and one as Jimmy makes the stop. All right, Jimmy, no Jimmy Dumont did a tremendous job stopping on a quarterback, stopping a quarterback safe. We're still in third quarter action. Of course, the elation, uh, again, talking about the confidence. You can see in the players that they know they can do it, and they did. This is a second and ten from the one-yard line, and LaPrairie is tackled in the end zone for a safety, making the score 13 to 5. That's the way it ended at the end of the third quarter. On a fourth and seven, Cummins again gets his second block punt of the game. Ball recovered by Billy Houston on the 48. And we're going to see a replay on this particular This is a action. great effort. Watch him take off for that football. He really, what we call layout, George D. Leon has worked real hard with these people on simple basics and special team plays, and that, that's one of them, the way a kid lays out when he blocks a punt. Here's Billy Houston picked up uh, both block punts. Here comes a pass to Boris for 14 yards. 
Right. Boris is going to be a big help to us this year. And, uh, you know, he's got good speed and he's catching the ball extremely well. I think he's going to take a lot of pressure off Andrew Baker. Vernon Williams is going to carry it for 14 yards here. This is a kid I think people from Rutgers and Iran are going to hear a lot about. He's a great athlete. And Angstadt kicking the 33-yarder with about 7.44 left in the game, making the score 16-5. to Connecticut has a third and nine from their own 10-yard line. Larry Corns passes intercepted by Butch Young, returned 14 yards for a very happy TD. And we're going to see a replay on this. Right. I think you're going to see Mercer Hedgeman had something to do uh, with this interception. Mercer Hedgeman's our uh, left linebacker. You'll see him number 57 coming in. He forces Corn, number three, their quarterback, to throw quicker than he like. Butchie steps in front of the receiver and Butchie was a real fine high school runner at Rollway High School and there's an example of his running ability. A very happy Butch Young and uh, the next play is a first and ten from the Rutgers 24. Albert Smith carries for 44 yards, gets a couple of good blocks from right. Beleza who yeah, blocked it twice. Right, there comes Beleza up there and as I say I was happy to see Albert get a chance to break away and, and make some good yardage. Making the final, of course, 22 to 5, a, a great ending to a ball game that gave you a chance to see just about every part of your overall offense and defense. As we said, the block punts, the, the kicking by both uh, your kickers, the placement as well as the punting, and then you had uh, a chance to see the men under adversity come out very well. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, Pat. You know, you're going into your first game and you really don't know what to expect from uh, different people, from seasoned people you do. But as you say, we learned a lot. And I think we learned a, a lot, especially about our special team people. We're going to find out about Boston College and uh, that uh, fabulous Flutie yeah. in just a few moments, right after we pause for this message. To review, our special guest, of course, is Coach Frank Burns. We talked about last week, very happy. Uh, this week, one of the top teams across the country in the personage of Doug Flutie and yeah. Boston College. They are, of course, uh, quite a ball club. They, they have to be quite a ball, a ball club, Pat. Uh, you know, they played a Clemson team, and I understand that Clemson hasn't, uh, hadn't lost a football game uh, and uh, since they tied, and it wasn't even a loss, but they tied uh, BC down there at Clemson last year about the same time in the season. Clemson, Clemson has a great team. And BC handled them very easily. Well, they won 31 to uh, 16, I believe it was. But uh, Flutie is probably one of the more remarkable football players I've seen in college football. For his size, hmm. uh, he's not only strong and elusive, but can do things that uh, I've seen very few players able to do under the charge, under right. the pressure. I, I tell you the truth, I, I can't think of one player that can do the amount of things that Flutie can do. He, he is a winner, there's no doubt about that. He's a kid that really never gives up and he's very impressive. I've seen him in a lot of film and, and I, I give you a good example. I've seen him four or five times going back to pass, scrambling for his life, he, he eluding different people, being tackled, being one inch off the ground and still looking to try to pass the ball to somebody. That's, that's a, he's an opportunist type of football player. And uh, unfortunately for the other teams, most of the times he succeeds in getting that ball off somehow, as, as amazing as, well, as it is. He really, he's an amazing kid. We're going to be taking a look at Flutie, and uh, as a matter of fact, it'll be mostly Flutie in the highlights, but the overall activity of the, the rest of the squad. Well, please. I think they have a very fine football team. You know, one, one guy is not going to win football games for you. They're gonna, he's going to help you to win, but he's not the, he's not the sole reason. They have Troy Stratford, a, a very fine tailback. He made 170 yards, 78 yards last week against Clemson. A big fullback, Biastek, who can block very well. He weighs about 238. A good size offensive line. They have a very, very aggressive and fast defense led by a, a, a great linebacker in Diossi. Diossi is about 250 pounds, can run very well, and he is good. And you won't forget last year's game. The last, you know, <clears throat> 30, 40 seconds of that ball game was... Uh, an inspiration to Boston College, and I'm sure has made them the kind of ball club they are already this year. Well, I think that helped to uh, certainly pick Boston College up without a doubt and give them a great deal of confidence. There's, there's no doubt it, 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 they had confidence in Flutie before, but after that football game, uh, you just can't forget the kid. Let's take a look at Flutie and Boston College. We have some highlights here that we'll be looking at pertaining to Flutie, and he goes to uh, some of his receivers here, some Flutie to Thalen for a touchdown. <laughs> And then uh, Flutie doing a little bit of, well, he does a little step there, high-stepping, and then a bootleg stepping by Flutie on the very next play as uh, he seems to find an open space no matter where it is on the Here he comes on turf. bootleg. This is what he's so dangerous on. He is so quick, and I've seen him on that bootleg before. If a man is standing out there, he'll just reverse his field, and then he'll throw back to the original receiver. 
going to fail him again. This is against There Penn he State. goes. Now, here's an example right, of scrambling ability right here. Now, this is a broken play, and he still comes back. He goes to Phelan, and Phelan picks up big, big yardage. A normal quarterback would be laying right there on the ground, and the team would have lost five or six yards. Here, they've gained maybe 30. This is Troy Stratford. He's a uh, sophomore this year from Linden. He's a great runner. Here's an example of his running ability. He's also a very fine receiver. As I said before, he had 100, 178 yards against Clemson last Saturday. A little bit of defensive activity. There's Ed Stiassi, the linebacker, number 99 that I talked about. Big, strong, very aggressive, very aggressive football player. He leads the BC defense. <clears throat> This is, a, this is a cornerback uh, coming through with a very fine interception. They've got a season secondary. Uh, they return every starter from last year's secondary, and they're all good football players. Strategy against BC. Well, uh, number one, uh, go in. Other than kidnapping. <laughs> right, that's what I was going to say. We're going to lock him up in your cellar. But uh, uh, number one, go into the game with, a, with a, a great attitude, an attitude that we can win. And we can win if we play our, the best football we possibly can play. Uh, we have to avoid mistakes. We can't give BC uh, the ball, you know, in close, that type of thing. And we, we've got to maintain field position. Uh, we're not going to cont contain Flutie completely, but we did a pretty good job on him last year. And, and hopefully we can do as good a job this year. I think you probably did one of the better jobs last year against uh, Boston College. I saw several of their games. And uh, in every game, or in most of the games, certainly the ones that I had seen, he was always under pressure, and they always had him. They were two seconds away from nailing him on almost every play, mm -hmm. and I think if somewhere along the line they can speed up those last two seconds, yeah. I think uh, some team, uh, possibly Rutgers, will be able to at least not stop him, but contain him for the most of the game. Right. Well, hopefully it'll be Rutgers, Pat. Well, let's hope so, and we'll see you next week. We'll be talking about what transpires in the Boston College Rutgers game next week, right here on the Rutgers Sports Review next week. And thank you again for being with us. We're happy to be here. Always a pleasure to have our special guest each and every week. He is with us, uh, rain or shine, win or lose, as he was last year. And, of course, right now it's a happy week for him to be with us with a great win over Connecticut last week. We'll be back with more action. We have some players coming up on the program right after this message. We have now two of the players for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. We have the senior defense. Defensive back John Cummins, and we have junior place kicker Tom Angstad. Welcome, gentlemen. Nice to have you with us. John Cummins, you flew through the air with the greatest of ease this past weekend, and uh, of course, one of the results, or two of the results of that flying, were two block punts, which were key factors in the ball game. One leading to a touchdown, one leading, of course, to the field goal. Uh, had that been something you've been practicing on? Well, it wasn't what we were practicing on. We were practicing on returning the ball better than we did last year. And this year, we had a return on, and the coach told me to just force the kick, make sure the kicker kicks the ball. If you can block it, block it. And then by the second half, I felt I can block one, so I gave it an effort, and I got through, made a couple blocks, and resulted in some points, and that helped us out during the course of the game, changed the momentum of the game, and. But Tom, three field goals must, must make you feel good. Oh yeah, it was, um, the first one was the toughest kick. You know, after I got well, one out of the way, well, you know, if, you miss the the, first one. Yeah, if you miss the first one, then you're in trouble and you have a lot of pressure on the second kick. But after I got the first one, the next two, you know, I really wasn't nervous on. And uh, well, my best kick I thought of the day was the one that was blocked. But, <laughs> and we'll never know how far yeah, that was going to go. Um, when did you first start thinking about being a kicker? When I was a sophomore in high school, I was playing JV ball, and uh, during practice, I messed around just kicking. And then one of the coaches you know, thought I kicked well. So the second to last game of the year, uh, I kicked a field goal for the JV. So junior year, the coach wanted me to come out for the team for varsity to kick. So that's when I decided I'm going to be a kicker. We're going to take a look at those highlights, seeing the two of you in the game, of course, against Connecticut, right after we pause for this message here on the Rutgers Sports Review. And our guests are John Cummins and Tom Angstad. We're going to take a look at the highlights of these fine young ball players right now from the Connecticut game. We'll be taking a look at John Cummins' activity as he blocks a punt here. Good block, and of course, we're going to see that on slow-mo replay. I can see the excitement and the happiness in you, John, with the uh, jumping there. What's going through your mind at that point as you're hitting That it? point right there, when I laid out and blocked the kick, first thing on my mind was to look for the ball, see if I could pick it up and run. And then I realized that we had a good opportunity to score, and that changed momentum right there. 
Now we have a shot, of course, of the uh, second of your two block punts for the afternoon. For the second one there, I just had to uh, fight off a blocker and get through. And once I got through, I saw the up back was going towards Billy Houston, number 15. And I decided to just take off right there. I just knew I can block that. Just jump for it. Got a piece of it. Once again, I was looking for the ball, but it went the other way. And I thought someone would pick it up, but they just recovered it. Now, we have some highlights coming up uh, after the high fives given to you during right. <laughs> the sideline activity. Highlights coming up from Tom Angstad. Tom, here you are with one of your three field goals of the day. Uh, What's the elation when it goes through the uprights? You see the officials come up with that um, victory sign. For usually, you. you can tell if you made your kick just by the, your swing and your impact on the ball without even looking at the ball. You can tell if it's through or not. You have to keep your head down? Yes, yeah, so you, you usually bring up your head when the ball's going through the uprights. Well, so the idea is kick. that if, if your head's up, you can see the ball before it reaches the uprights, so you kick wrong, right? Right, well, they want the ball coming down. You know, the ball has to be coming down when you look up. So. So looking up too quick sometimes can send that ball in the wrong direction. Here's one of the kickoffs. I got under that one. Pushed it to the right. I think the tee went further than the ball. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got a pretty good kick on that one. Here comes another one. This one yeah, this goes one, into the end zone. Yeah, this one I hit well. What's your overall average on uh, kicking? On kickoffs? Say on the kickoff. Um, between the five and the goal line usually. You know, if there's a wind, I'll go into the goal line. If there's wind against us, you know, I might hang out about the 8-yard line, 10-yard line. Now, you've only kicked three, of course, first game of the season. When you were kicking in high school, what kind of a range did you have? In high school, my range was back to 50. I had a 49-yarder in one game, and most of the other kicks were under 40. What do you think you could hit on an average uh, accurately? On a, accurately, 50 yards, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. There's days where you can kick 55, 60. But, you know, with no wind, you know, normal conditions, 50, you know, pretty consistent. That's putting a good boot to the ball. John, uh, your overall activity insofar as the academics are concerned, you're majoring? I'm an economics major with a concentration of accounting. You come from a long line, a legacy of uh, Cummins who have been in uh, the North Jersey area. All five, your parents and your, your uh, brother and sister, went to Roselle High School. Right. All five of us went to Roselle High and graduated from there. My mother and father was unfortunate to go to college, but my Your mother, mother was an outstanding athlete. She was, yes. She received class athlete honors. I think that's 1948. In Westport. Uh, she was the girl select for the class athlete, and she played Both basketball select, and see. softball. Mm -hmm. John and Tom, thank you very much for being with us. Congratulations on a great game last weekend, and best of luck this weekend against Boston College, and of course for the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you. John Cummins, senior defensive back, and Tom Angstad, junior place kicker, one of the fine or two of the fine ball players on the Rutgers squad this season. The Boston College-Rutgers game will be held at Giants Stadium. Remember, the time is 